Z, assess damage. Captain, we're running on auxiliary power. Main generators are damaged. Conduit is damaged. Drive is powered down. Shield status? Shields are at 85% capacity. Okay, I'm gonna swap out the coupling. Route auxiliary power through the port side conduit and into the drive. Captain, I'm afraid there won't be time for that. The renegade ship pushed us into the stratosphere of Perseus 7. We're now descending. Pirates, Z. They were pirates. Renegades make them sound like heroes or something. We are descending rapidly, Captain. Impact will occur before you are able to replace the coupling and power up the drive. Damn it! Z, do we have power to thrusters? Yes, Captain. Route the power there. Routing 50% power to thrusters. Give it 85. Captain, I cannot advise this course of action. Chances of survival are less than 15%. Do you have any ideas with a higher chance of survival? No, Captain. Route 85% power to thrusters. Leave the remaining 15 on shields to keep us from burning up. Acknowledged. Engaging thrusters. Velocity decreasing. Good. Take over, Z. I need to buckle in. Keep slowing us down. Impact in T minus 30 seconds. Okay, Z. Three seconds before impact, switch all power to shields. Acknowledged. Calibrating. Chance of survival is now 47%. Is that the best we can do? Remaining on thrusters for 0.3 seconds longer increases your chances to 51%. Do it. Impact in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. See. Yes, Captain. Status. Scanning. Main generator is damaged. Auxiliary power is intact. Three sections of conduit are damaged. Minor damage to hull on starboard side. Navigation system reporting two memory modules are damaged. Landing gear requires recalibration. All other functions are normal. Nearly all issues caused by... Pirate. Weapons. I have sustained very little additional damage from impact. Congratulations, Captain. Ugh, thanks. My biomonitor indicates that you are bleeding, but it does not appear to be fatal. Huh? Oh, it's just my nose. I'll be fine. You said we're on Perseus 7? Yes, Captain. This is just a backwater colony. Perseus 7 was abandoned 12 years ago due to insufficient agricultural progress. Additional funding was requested, but subsequently denied. Yeah, that checks out. Shall I transmit an SOS to the nearest base? Now, Z. They'll come pick us up, but they'll throw me on a prison ship for the rest of my life. You didn't commit the crime, Captain. I know I didn't but it still got pinned on me. My face is on wanted posters all over the sector. Are you picking anything up locally? There are remnants of a settlement two clicks away from our location. Perfect. I'm gonna get started on repairs, see what kind of progress I can make before I need to hunt down spare parts. Sit tight, Z. I'll have you fixed in no time. Okay, run diagnostics. All repairs are sufficient, aside from the damaged power connectors. Those are not salvageable, and will need to be replaced entirely. <laughs> Captain, you've been working on repairs for 11 hours. Your body is showing signs of stress due to exhaustion. I must recommend that you sleep. Z, I want to get off this rock. I'm headed to that settlement. 
Captain. Z, I'm going. You can't stop me. Captain. Don't argue with me. Captain. There is a life form approaching the ship. What? I thought you said this place was abandoned. All records indicate that it has no inhabitants. And yet a human is walking right towards us. Are they alone? Yes. There are no other life forms on our scanners. I'm gonna go talk to them. Train the turrets on them. If they try anything, well, you know what to do. Affirmative. Hey, are you... You... No. <laughs> I swear the universe is laughing at me. Hmm? Oh, it's just this string of luck that I've had lately. I finally snag a contract that can help clear my name, and on my way to deliver, I get attacked, crash land on an abandoned planet, and come face to face with the one person in the entire galaxy that I loathe. The last time I saw you, I was behind bars in Centaurus City. Oh, you absolutely had a choice. You narked me out, plain and simple. I heard you're one of the top dogs in the aces. Care to explain to me how you ended up being the only person on this entire planet? Mutiny, huh? <laughs> Poetic. How did it feel to be betrayed by someone you trusted? Yeah, I'm sure you didn't deserve it. They never do. Me? <laughs> I haven't been in touch with the aces since you screwed me over. The judge gave me a choice. Prison for ten years, or serve seven years in the Galactic Navy. But you already knew that, didn't you? <sighs> yeah, I'm a merc now. I served honorably, took my accolades and my bonus, and bought this ship. <sighs> I guess I should be thanking you. Without your complete and utter backstabbing, I never would have ended up doing honest work. And I certainly wouldn't be known as one of the best pilots in the sector. Hey, I didn't lose control of my ship. I had an encounter with pirates, and this is the aftermath. You know what? I don't need to explain myself to you. In any case, I can't move the ship until I replace the power connectors for the main generator, so... What kind? <laughs> That's not your concern. The connectors required are DT-14s. Z! You know where I can find some. All right. You have my attention. What do you want? No. No way. You're not coming on board my ship. I'd sooner die on this planet. Captain, if you refuse this offer, your chance of dying on this planet is 98.2%. Not a good time, Z. I'll find my own way off this rock, if there is one. I will not work with you. Why? Because you screwed me over. I trusted you, and not only did you nearly get me killed in a shootout, but I was ripped out of the only life I'd ever known. So yes, I can keep hating you forever. And I don't give two shits if you die here. Captain, it may not be my place, but I would like to remind you that you need this job. You've stated many times that the pay will be sufficient to hire legal defense to clear your name. We cannot leave this planet unless we obtain the power connectors. Upon analyzing the situation objectively, you will find that this is your best option. Look, I am on the biggest job of my life, and I cannot afford to lose this. So I'm willing to set the well-deserved hatred aside for a hot second. 
That's none of your business. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to get me the parts I need. We will leave this backwater hell on my ship. I'll drop you off at Portum Station. I complete my job and collect my pay, and we never see one another ever again. Deal? Fine. Just hurry up. Captain, would you like me to add a passenger profile to my interface? <sighs> sure. Give them a guest account with bare minimum access to onboard amenities. What name should I give them? Traitor, in all caps. Acknowledged. Captain, it appears that your blood pressure is elevated. You may as well consider this my new baseline, at least until they're off my ship. I do not completely understand your animosity, Captain. You haven't shared much detail about your youth. Let me give you the short version. In Centaurus City, abandoned kids get taken into an orphanage run by the Aces, a local gang. They provide food, clothing, education, general care, with the expectation that once they become teenagers, they'll start pulling their weight for the family. That's how both of us got started. We were all made to compete with each other for favor, but we were still close. We had a lot of potential as a team. Which is why I was surprised that they led the authorities right to me in the middle of a smuggling job. Not only did the seller get bumped off, but I got shot, and then arrested. My whole life was turned upside down because of them. You heard what happened afterward. Did they ever give a reason? No. They came to visit me in jail while I was waiting for a sentence. Told me that they were the one who ratted me out, and damn, they were smug about it. My guess is they started seeing me as competition rather than family. Must have worked out for them too, because the channels back home are constantly buzzing about how they're poised to take over the aces. Although, a mutiny by their own crew. <laughs> Oof. That's gotta hurt. It seems you have changed a great deal since your youth. Is it possible that they have changed too? I suppose anything's possible, Z. But I doubt it. I really strongly doubt it. I'm gonna get some sleep. Wake me when they get back. Hello, Senator. I know I'm a bit late to check in, but your suspicions were correct. Pirates knew about the cargo. They tried to pull a fast one on me, but I dispatched them with extreme prejudice, as per your orders. We did have to make a pit stop for repairs, but rest assured the cargo is intact and en route. I will contact you again when I'm ready to receive a docking assignment at Portum Station. Captain Andromeda Hayes, signing off. Message sent. Thank you, Z. Hello, traitor. What are you doing up here? I told you to stay in the spare bunk. She calls you traitor because I told her to. Why are you up here? I don't give a shit if you're bored. You want to talk. Talking was never part of the deal. Put your ass into a bunk and stay there until we dock at Portum. You are every bit as persistent as I remember. Fine. Sit up here if you must, but shut the hell up. We're receiving an incoming text transmission. If it's not from Senator Lorana, ignore it. I'm sorry, Captain. This transmission carries an emergency signature. My programming requires me to disseminate the information within. Uh, okay. Read it to me, then. SOS from the SV Felicity. Pirates have boarded the ship and are holding hostages. No demands made, but have already killed two passengers. Onboard comm systems down. Using privately owned device to relay this message. Don't know how much time we have. The message cuts off there, Captain. Holy shit. What intel do we have on the vessel? 
The SV Felicity is a passenger class transport vessel, counting crew and passengers on the present manifest, and accounting for the two that have already been killed, there are 84 living souls on board. We are a few minutes away and are the only vessel within a two-hour journey. They could all be dead by the time someone gets there. What? Yes, I am thinking about it. I'm a mercenary, not a monster. Captain, if you reveal yourself to save these passengers, your freedom may be forfeit. I know, but there are 84 innocent people on that ship. I won't put my own freedom over their lives, that's where I draw the line. Z, activate cloaking and circle around the ship while I suit up. Run a scan, tell me what I'm working with here. Acknowledge. You're coming with me? <laughs> the hell you are. So you want me to put a blaster in your hand and ask you to watch my back? How stupid do you think I am? Yes, under normal circumstances, I would have a much better chance if I went in with a partner. But these aren't normal circumstances because I don't fucking trust you. Oh, you've changed. Well, that solves everything, then. How could I believe you? Yeah, you're damn right we don't have that kind of time. Save your sob story. Captain, I am reading 91 heat signatures, so we can expect seven pirates. Do they have any droids? The only onboard droids are those deployed into service on the Felicity. They are currently in hibernation. Well, that's a bit of good news. Alright, dock us in, but stay cloaked. Captain, your odds are not good against seven heavily armed pirates. Your chances improve greatly if you take the traitor with you. Z, do you hear yourself? I keep a log of all of our conversations. So you definitely remember the one we had an hour ago about minding your own business? Some recent logs may still be compiling. Was that a joke? Perhaps. Weeks and weeks of working on your humor algorithm and it kicks in right now? Seriously? I thought it was funny. Oh, bite me. Why are you already suited up? I said no. Fine, grab a weapon. You so much as sneeze in my direction and I'll end your miserable existence, are we clear? Docking complete. Okay, don't let anyone aside from us on board. If I don't come back, initiate Raven protocol. Affirmative. All right, looking at this readout from Z, there are three pirates guarding the hostages, two on the bridge, and two more meandering the ship, probably headed towards the cargo bay. Let's pick off the two stragglers, then we'll address the rest. No, no weapons yet. We take down these two quietly. We don't want to draw out all the others yet. And avoid the cameras, they might be watching on the bridge. Yeah, just like we used to. Let's go. Nicely done. Come on.
looks like the passengers and crew are being held in there. Yeah, three pirates, all armed to the teeth. No, their position is too defensible and there are too many civilians in there. We can't go in like this. A distraction? Yeah, that's a good idea. Wait, the security droids we passed in the hall. They're armed, they make a lot of noise. If we power them up, we can draw the pirates out and, hell, they can help us take them down. No, stay behind that crate, just in case. Stay hidden. Booting. Calibrating. Wanted criminal identified. Oh, shit. Andromeda Hayes, you will now be placed under arrest. Hey, you. Damn it. Yeah, right now I'm trying to save innocent civilians from pirates. Arrest me later once they're not in danger, okay? Assessing. Affirmative. They're chasing those three. Let's go after the last two on the bridge. Shit, get down. Ha! One left. Whew. <laughs> Are you injured? Good. Let's restore some of the critical systems. What? Security cams? Let me see. <laughs> well, those three are down for the count. Knew those droids were good for something. Oh, just deleting the footage of us sneaking around the bridge. Let them think the pirates messed with the recordings. We were never here. Well, you weren't. I'm gonna go back to the passengers and crew. Let them know the threat is over and, uh, surrender myself. No, you are not coming with. Damn it, stop arguing. As much as your face annoys me, that's not my reasoning for asking you to stay behind. I've been identified. They're going to arrest me. But they haven't seen you yet. You still have a chance to get out of here. No. If I try to run away, they'll follow and try to blow the Zephyr to pieces. That endangers my entire job. It won't matter that I helped these people. The reason I'm wanted... Well, they have no choice but to take me into custody. You wouldn't know this because you were on Perseus 7 when it happened, but Commander Rojex was murdered, and they think I did it. Yes, that, Commander Rojex. Oh shit is right. And for the record, no, it wasn't me. Damn it, they're here already. Go out the side door, get back to the ship. Z will initiate Raven protocol when you get back. Tell her I also added your arrival to Portum as an objective. She'll ask for proof of authorization. Give her code Delta-92. Why am I trusting you? I'm not. I don't trust you at all, but right now you're literally my only option. That cargo has to get to Senator Lorana today, and Z is the only one that can finish that job. What about my pay? Look, I, there's more to this job than just the pay, all right? Lives are at stake here. The pay was just a really nice perk to what I was already doing. I don't have time to explain more. Just get the message to Z, please. What am I going to do? Submit to arrest, I guess. Beyond that, I don't know. But if I come out of this and 
my ship is in one piece and Z tells me you've done as I asked, then I'll be one step closer to believing that you've changed. All right? But get the hell back to the ship. Now. Go. Andromeda Hayes, you're under arrest for the murder of Commander Adrian Rojex. Any attempt to escape will be met with lethal force. Yeah, yeah, not my first rodeo, pal. Welcome back, traitor. Where is Captain Hayes? She has been arrested. That is unfortunate. Initiating Raven Protocol. Undocking from the SV Felicity and plotting a course for Portum Station. Arrival estimated in... Approximately five hours. What is it, traitor? Raven Protocol is a directive from Captain Hayes that instructs me to complete her current mission. In this context, it means that we will go to Portum Station, where I will contact Senator Lorana so that she may collect her cargo. What will happen to... Andy? Who is Andy? A short inversion of Andromeda. A nickname derived from the captain's given name. That is very clever. The captain will likely be taken to the Sector 7 prison ship for processing and to await a final sentence. You are correct. She did not commit murder. She was docked at Theta Station when the incident occurred, but she was not at the scene of the crime. We have collected security footage of her completing her business at the port and then returning to this ship before the murder occurred. But an attempt to prove her innocence to the Theta authorities was not sufficient. They were quite comfortable with drawing on her past criminal history as sufficient proof of guilt, without examining the evidence. They put out a warrant for her arrest which was elevated due to the high rank of the victim. She wanted to hire legal defense to clear her name the honorable way, which is why she took the present job working for Senator Lorana and stayed under the radar until now. Yes, I do still have the evidence of the captain's innocence. Why do you ask? The captain gave you additional objectives to the Raven Protocol. What is the secure authorization code given to you by the captain? Code Delta-92 confirmed. Since you have the authorization code, I am happy to assist. What are the additional objectives? That plan should be quite manageable. I will collect the necessary data and send a message to Senator Lorana. I recommend that you get some rest in the meantime. This will be quite the undertaking. Not hungry, droid. Hello, Andromeda. Senator, what are you doing here? I've come to personally oversee your release. My release? What are you talking about? Your name has been cleared, Andromeda. Senator, we're practically family. How many times must I ask you to call me Kajani? Johnny, we talked about this. I wanted to do this the right way. I wanted to hire a lawyer, present evidence in court, all of that shit. I didn't want you to pull strings for me. I didn't, dear. This was settled in a court of law. What? When did this happen? Why, why wasn't I told? We didn't have much time. They were already deciding on a verdict and execution due to your dangerous nature. We had to jump in quickly. Who's we? Your companion, and the lawyer we hired. Your AI was quite adamant that you intended to use your pay to hire legal defense. I thought I'd take out the middleman and 
hire them directly. It was pure happenstance that the first available lawyer was the best woman on my team. Wait, my companion? Yes, your crewmate. No, they were just a passenger. They were planning to leave my ship at Portum. When I went to your ship to pick up the cargo, they were armed with a data pad begging my help to prove your innocence. You know I was already on board with clearing your name, so I didn't need much convincing. They helped you prove my innocence? They teamed up with your AI to pass the information off to me and the lawyer. And they gave testimony in court as a character witness. They did? They also collected a passenger from the SV Felicity to corroborate the story of your daring and selfless rescue. I... shit. I, I didn't expect them to. On that note, you're not supposed to know they helped. I was asked to keep their involvement under wraps. They even swore Z to secrecy using a secure authorization code. Asshole. So, you're telling me because... Because you need more friends in your corner, and someone at your side. I worry about you, traveling the galaxy alone, fighting your demons. Whoever this person is, whatever history they have, they care about you. And that makes them valuable to me. <sighs> yeah. Kira wouldn't want you alone in the world. You know that. She would never want you to shut everyone out. I know. For me, Andromeda, and for her memory, please, let someone watch your back. <sighs> okay, don't get your tail in a twist, alright? I'll think about it. You didn't hear it from me, but they've taken a room at the Nebula Hotel on Portum for the time being. I get the sense they're trying to lay low. If you choose to seek them out, that's where they'll be. Alright. What about my ship? Z was kind enough to act as chauffeur. She's docked here. I'd appreciate a ride back to Portum in the meantime. <laughs> of course. Let's get you signed out of this place. Kajani, what about the job? Did it... Did everything go as you'd hoped? Yes. I'll fill you in on the details on our way back to Portum. But, thanks to your swift delivery, we were able to accomplish what we set out to do. Our joint efforts saved hundreds of lives. <sighs> I'm relieved. As am I. Well, no point in hanging out here. Let's go. A bartender. Two of whatever they're having, please. Hi. Yeah, she told me you were here. No, it, it's not your fault. If the senator wants to find shit out, she's gonna find it out. Your drinks. Twelve credits, please. Thanks. Thank you for your business. What? I owe you a drink. And some gratitude. Plus an apology. No, I know I was justified in not trusting you, but I was pretty vile about the whole thing. And for you to turn around and save my life when you could have just walked away from me and my bitterness, well, that says something. Yeah. Kajani, uh, Senator Lorana, told me about that too. Let me guess. You used Z's authorization code, not just to get you to Portum like I said, but you took the liberty of adding objectives to get her to release the evidence to you. <laughs> well, your methods are the same as they ever were, but...
Why'd you try to run off? You were gonna disappear. You didn't want me to find out you'd helped. If she hadn't told me outright, I might never have known you had a hand in it. You even tried to keep Z quiet. Why would you try to slip away without even giving me a chance to thank you? You were just trying to set things right. <laughs> Maybe you have changed. Yeah. Maybe we've both changed. Can I ask you something? I get that the aces pitted us against each other, made us compete for every little scrap we got, but... We were supposed to be friends, and we were close as family once. Was I really that much of a threat to you? <laughs> Chalk it up to selfishness and teenage stupidity, huh? <laughs> Look, you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to, I just... It never made sense to me, is all. I'm sorry, too. Eh, uh, don't get ahead of yourself. I don't like you, yet. But I don't hate you. I just might be willing to give you a second chance. I was wondering... Uh, hoping, actually that we could be colleagues. Well, Kajani told me you appeared to be lying low. I'm guessing it's because of the mutiny. Yeah, I figured. She gave me another job. I could do it alone, but it would be easier with your help. I could really use your skill set. Plus, what better place to hide out than on a stealth ship captained by your supposed mortal enemy? <laughs> if taking this job means that we both get to start fresh, I say we take it. Of course, pay would be 50-50. Is it dangerous? Obviously. <laughs> You're in? Great. <laughs> that, um, that's good. Yeah, I can give you more details on board the ship. Not here with all of these curious ears around. Finish your drink and collect your stuff. I'll see you on board the Zephyr in an hour. Welcome back. Yeah, have a seat. Right. Uh, you need a little background. My last job, as you know, was transporting cargo for the senator. The cargo was actually several thousand vaccines. We're fighting an illness that impacts both her species and ours. People are calling it the Gengo. I assume with all of your contacts in the Aces, you've heard of it. You didn't get much info before you got dumped on Perseus 7. Fair enough. Well, it broke out in a cross-species colony on Tiber some time ago. Humans develop a rash to start, then they're laid up with a cough and a fever for a few days. Then, about 55% of them begin to slip into hallucinations and sudden organ failure. Those that survive have some odd side effects, improved bone density and muscle mass higher brain function, and they don't sleep, really, but they're not affected by the lack of sleep, stuff like that. For the Waylicks, their iridescent skin goes a dull gray, their eyes get bloodshot, which looks really freaky given their purple blood, and while they don't get the cough, they do get the hallucinations, and the death rate's even higher. We're talking 70%. The survivors have the same side effects as the humans. At first, they thought it was unique to the planet, Maybe something in the water, or the local flora. 
but then it started showing up in nearby locations. Saxon, Delta II and IV, a couple of military stations. At all the locations, the sick are exclusively human and Walix. Manxil and Bressum don't seem to be affected. Right, only the bipedal species are affected. So, the Walix and human governments quietly contracted a science team to work on prevention and cure. They threw millions of credits at them, and they did make some headway. Yeah, the vaccines were delivered and distributed. And according to what I heard today, initial results look really good for prevention. But now we need to figure out where this is coming from, and we need to continue distributing vaccines. That's where our little crew of two comes in. The science team that developed the vaccine disappeared shortly after I picked up the shipment from them. The senator asked me to follow a ping that was received a couple days ago, see if we can figure out what happened to them. We don't know if they're alive, but expect a fight either way. It could very well be a trap. Yeah. So, on that note, you should go get some rest. Uh, sure. I can't promise I'll answer, but you can ask. Why does the senator treat me like family? Because she is family. It's a long story, one I don't really want to tell right now. But if you're asking why a Waylick senator tries to mother me into oblivion, just know there's a good reason. <laughs> sure. Where are you going? No, you're a paid member of the crew now. You don't have to sleep on a bunk in the cargo hold anymore. <laughs> to show my thanks for getting me out of prison, you get your own quarters now. Don't get me wrong, it's still a tiny space, but it's yours for as long as you're employed with me. It's the door across from mine. Yeah, um, sleep well, I guess. I like them a great deal. Z, you like everyone, including my salty ass. That's not exactly a stellar endorsement of your ability to judge character. You don't have so many friends that you can afford to insult me. Ouch! Damn, Z! I recommend a visit to the med bay to treat that burn. <laughs> Get back to work before I unplug you. Landing zone is clear, Captain. Would you like me to begin descent? No thanks, Z. Switch controls to manual. I'll put the Zephyr down. As you wish. Hey, don't touch that. Why not? My ship, my rules? <laughs> thanks, but I don't need a co-pilot. That's what Z's for. Besides, I seem to recall you always making me pilot ships on our supply runs because you were, and I quote you directly, terrible at it and would get us killed. You took lessons? What, for piloting? Huh, imagine that. Traitor, I have made some adjustments to your biomonitor and applied them to the spare armored suit. You will find that it has been calibrated to your personal baseline. I really need to change your name in the system. Um, go ahead and suit up. Z put the Zephyr into standby, but stay alert. I want to be ready to bug out if it gets hairy. Especially if we need to evac the scientists. Acknowledged. Alright, we've been over the blueprints of the building a few times. We know scanning won't get us anywhere, they've got cloaking all over the facility, and Z won't be able to determine whether there are life forms inside. We could be walking into anything. There's no other ships nearby? Good catch. That means we're either far too late or about to spring a giant trap on ourselves. What? 
I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. I know how this shit works, and so do you. Weapons at the ready. First we secure the perimeter, then we go in the side entrance. This place is empty. There's no sign of anyone. According to Kajani, this place is one of the government laboratories, but it was hardly used. It's more like an outpost. Getting a ping from here doesn't make sense. This reminds you of a job we did? Which one? No, wait. Let me think. Oh, when the boss sent us into that abandoned light rail station to steal all of those weapons? <laughs> yeah, that was the last job we did together. I'm surprised you still think about that. What would Ripley say if he knew we'd ended up working together again? <laughs> what did you find? Blood. No, not a blaster wound. It looks like somebody got kicked around pretty badly, though. Wait, there's something under this desk. It's a key card. Dr. Endra's, specifically. Yeah, I do recognize it. He used it to get into the system when I was picking up the vaccines. You saw a console back there? Perfect. Let's see if this card can give us access. Wow. Security footage, access logs, test notes. The scientists were working here, conducting more research. But why did they move to this location? Why not stay at the better equipped facility? There's a gap in the security footage. Look, almost three years with nothing, and then two weeks ago the internal systems were activated using this badge. Let's see what happened on that day. That's Dr. Endra, and the entire science team. He used his badge to get in, but they're being escorted by a security detail? Oh geez, okay, not a security detail. Kidnappers with weapons. Great. No, I can't make out their faces on the recording, they're wearing helmets, but there's a week and a half worth of footage here. Let's skim through it, see if we can identify who these assholes might be. Setting up the lab, running tests. They're using different equipment, though. No, it's not the same as what they were using to develop the vaccine. I mean, I'm not a big science brain, but I can tell you that machine wasn't there originally. And that finished product? Those aren't the little vials they were using to carry the completed vaccine. Those are some big-ass canisters they're putting into cold storage. I don't suppose there's anything in the cold storage now. Empty? Ugh, figures. I don't know, I'm just as confused as you are. But look, throughout the footage they're all working at gunpoint. These abductors keep circling them, roughing them up if they don't work. Looks like Dr. Andra had to intervene a few times. How many kidnappers? Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, and then this big guy makes thirteen. And he took his helmet off. You know, that one kind of looks like... <laughs> hey, you look faint. Are you okay? What is it? Who was I going to say he looks like? Um... I was gonna say he looks like that guy that used to harass us in the Aces. Uh, Angus, I think it was? I used to ironically call him Smiley when I was a kid, and he hated me for it. Wait, you think this is actually him? That's your entire crew? Yeah, yeah, I see the patches on their suits. Okay, I'm zooming in. That's the Aces symbol. The one we grew up spray-painting on walls in Centaurus City. 
Why on earth did Angus and the Aces kidnap these scientists? Did you know about this? Right. This would have been after you got dumped on Perseus 7. Of course you wouldn't know. Wait, Angus was the one who led the mutiny on you? It doesn't surprise me. He always hated us. Hated everyone but himself, really. But I thought you were Ripley's favorite. So what made Angus think he could get away with dumping you and taking over your entire crew? You disobeyed a direct order from Ripley? And you cost him millions of credits. Gods, what did you do? Right. Sounds like a normal cargo run. People? The cargo was... people? 150 human and Walix people. Oh my gods. I never thought the Aces would stoop so low as to take up trafficking. That used to be a hard limit for Ripley. You got the crew drunk and set the people free. Really? No, I, I don't blame you. I like to think I would have done the same. That's too far, and I'm glad you saw that and did something about it. So, Angus found out you had liberated one of Ripley's investments, and he saw an opportunity to get rid of you. None of the crew stood up for you? I suppose that's true. You did cause them all to lose out on a massive payday. For what it's worth, I respect what you did. Especially given all that you had on the line, you risked everything you had been building your whole life. Just to do the right thing. Look at you becoming a renegade. <laughs> Based on the timing of this, they had to have come here right after they left you for dead. Check out this last security vid. They're packing up and getting out of here in a rush, like they knew someone was onto them. Look, Dr. Endra's putting something on that data pad. He slipped it into one of those drawers and locked it without them noticing. Then Angus starts roughing up one of the lab techs. The doctor gets involved. Ooh. So that's why there was blood on the floor. And while he's down on the ground, he slips the keycard under the desk where we would find it. Smart man. Yeah, here, take the keycard. See if the data pad's still in the drawer. Bingo. Let's see what they were up to. To whoever comes for us, please return this information to Senator Lorana of the Walix government. Uh, and the rest of it is encrypted. Let's pull a copy of the security logs from that console. Then we'll take this back to the ship, contact the senator, and see if Z can crack open the data pad. I'm forwarding you a copy, Senator. It's a big data packet, but it should be there soon. Read off the important information for now. Sure. Z, will you read that first section for us? Certainly. The Gango is not a disease in the way we had thought. It is the side effect of testing on several colonies, some sort of serum that is meant to enhance human and Walix physiology to make them stronger, faster, and able to survive suboptimal conditions in space. Method of distribution is currently the water supply. Once ingested, it begins affecting bipedal organisms. We have been taken hostage by an interplanetary gang called the Aces due to our work on the vaccines. They have repurposed us to redevelop the serum due to the high death rates of colonists. The next sections mostly detail the research, so I'm sending this over so you can get it to bigger brains than mine, but in the last paragraph, Dr. Endra says he managed to turn on the security cams, send a ping using his secure channel, and document this intel before the Aces moved them. Is there any indication why the Aces are involved in this? 
This says that the ACEs have been contracted not only to abduct and supervise the scientists, but to provide human and Wailix test subjects through whatever means necessary. In exchange for a hefty sum and a steady supply of the finished product for their own use. We know they don't have any test subjects right now. My colleague here broke that particular supply chain, but... Kajani, this says the ACEs are contracted out to someone in the government, which means somebody is working with Ripley directly. That might even be why the ACEs left in a hurry. Someone might have tipped them off. You can't trust anyone with this. I appreciate your concern, but I know how to look after myself. I know, but please be careful. I know you've both left your old lives behind, and rightly so, but it seems to me that the history the both of you have with the Aces may come in handy. Well, that's possible. My colleague here suffered a mutiny when they set the trafficked people free. Now we know why they were trafficking in the first place. What do you think? Where will they go next? You think they'll go after the families you freed? That's true. Ripley will want his investment back. Do they have any way of knowing where you left them? It sounds like you hid your tracks well. I strongly doubt they're on their tails just yet. Where did they end up? You transferred them to a freight vessel headed for Elmir. According to my data, that vessel hasn't docked in Elmir yet. In fact, it's not set to dock for another few days, and it's had no interruptions to its flight path, so it would appear they are just fine. Perfect. Let's go now. We have a chance to get out in front of the aces. Let's go get them. Not so fast, Andromeda. Let me assemble two teams, one to intercept the freight vessel and escort the refugees to safety, and another to assist you when we plant false information about the refugees' whereabouts. You want to lure them into a trap. That's genius. And cutthroat. You don't get this far in government without dirtying your hands from time to time. <laughs> All right. Please be careful. There's a traitor in your midst. Someone who knew about the original lab location. It had to be someone on the council. I don't want them finding out and you getting hurt. Andromeda, I've been doing this since a hundred years before you were born. I know exactly what I'm doing. Give me some time to sort this out. In the meantime, take a little shore leave. Relax. I'll contact you within a couple of days. And thank you again for a job well done. Until next time. <sighs> Hurry up and wait. Oh, come on. You know I've never been patient. Yeah, she did say something about shore leave. Why, does that interest you? I mean, we can. We have nothing better to do. Kajani already transferred our payment, so... Yeah. Do I know of any good places far away from Centaurus? Yeah, I do, actually. No, it's not a scuzzy town on the edge of nowhere, I promise. It's... A really nice place. I haven't been there in a while, but I think you'd like it. Z, set a course for Dagas. Yes, yes Captain. Captain. Look, um, I really respect what you did. Setting those people free, I mean. I know exactly what it cost you. I'm glad you think it was worth it. Captain, this is a reminder. You wanted to change Trader's name in the ship system. So I did. What would you like to update it to? Renegade. You once said that Renegade makes someone sound like a hero. Yes, Z. Just change it, please. <sighs> change complete. I'm gonna go lay down for a while. Have fun with Z. How about this one? I make apocalypse puns like there's no tomorrow. 
Your laughter appears genuine. I am glad you like it. What about? I don't trust stairs. They're always up to something. What the hell are you teaching her? Renegade has been improving my humor algorithm. Here is a joke for you. A plateau is the highest form of flattery. Improving is a really strong word, don't you think? Your puns were always horrible. And now you're permanently branding them on disease code. Thank you for that. It appears I am to be a blend of many personalities. Um, Z, you summoned me up here? Yes, Captain. We are ready to land on Dagas. I thought you might like to do the honor yourself. Yeah, you're right. Thank you, Z. Well, are you ready for a night on the town? Yeah. That's the city in the distance. In most cities, you'd land in a spaceport in the city itself, or immediately adjacent, but Dagas is unique. In order to avoid traffic cluttering up the city airspace, they put smaller ports several clicks away from the city, all pointing away like the spokes of a wheel. Then you ride a bullet train into the city itself. It makes the night sky look so much more beautiful when it's free of air traffic. Yes, it is a Whalex planet. It's one of their homeworlds, actually. The populace is very welcoming to humans, so some of us have settled here. A few members of Whalex government can claim this as their birthplace, but they keep political business far away from Dagas. This is meant to be a retreat of sorts. A place pure and untainted by conflict. A place for fun, reflection, bonding, and new beginnings. Come on, let's find a watering hole. Z, be good while we're gone. Like boiling water, you will be missed. <sighs> this is your fault. A walk around town, a tour of the Whalex Aquarium, a shipload of tasty street food, and now drinks by a lake. This has been a top-notch shore leave so far, and we're just getting started. Against my better judgment, I'm actually having fun. For the first time in a long time. This was a good idea. No, I am enjoying your company. You've more than proven yourself to be a good person. Which is really inconvenient, considering I've sworn to loathe you for all eternity. <laughs> Now I have to go back on my word, and I usually hate doing that. I guess this is one time I'm glad to be proven wrong. Credit for your thoughts? You want to fly the Zephyr sometime? Absolutely not. You got into accidents with no less than four spacecraft in between the time you got your license and the time I got arrested. Two of them were totaled thanks to bad landings. You're not getting anywhere near the Zephyr's controls. Yeah, I heard you the first time when you said you took specialized flying lessons, but I'm not convinced. <laughs> Why did you do that, anyway? The Aces had plenty of pilots on hand. You never needed to fly anywhere if you didn't want to. Even Ripley, the man who preached self-reliance, didn't pilot his own spacecraft. Because of me? What do you mean? That's why you took flying lessons? Because you missed me? So, while I was out making headlines as one of the most talented pilots in the sector, you were seeing that and trying to do something to feel closer to me? You regretted losing your best friend. Damn. Thank you for telling me that. Ask me something. <laughs> you just shared something pretty deep with me, so sure. Uh, 
What did Z mean when she said she was a blend of many personalities? Oh, um, it's a long story. You're right, we do have time. Z is special. She's not like other AIs. You could say she's custom. This isn't helping. Let me start from the beginning. When I first left the service, I wanted to be a private contractor. A pilot taking jobs from the government in an official capacity. I had the connections, I had the skill, and I had the reputation. All I needed was a ship, so I went looking for one. <laughs> You're right, a stealth class Zephyr is absurdly expensive, but I got her second hand. Everyone knows you can get the best metal in the galaxy on Cepheus, but after a few weeks, I'd been through every dealership and every junkyard, and I'd found a few fixer-uppers, but nothing I actually wanted to call mine. As I was leaving this one dealership, I overheard a conversation, well, rather an argument, between some rich guy and the owner of the establishment. Moneybags was trying to sell what looked at first glance to be a smoldering heap of scrap. But we looked closer. It was a Zephyr, and the owner was refusing to take it off his hands because it wasn't salvageable. We gave it a once-over while we eavesdropped. It was in bad shape physically, but all of that could be repaired. The big problem was that the AI core was damaged, and Zephyrs required the AI to function. It's just a giant paperweight without the functioning intelligence, which is why the owner of the place was refusing to give him anything for it. He didn't see the value in it. But we did. We knew we could fix it up. Uh, I did say we, didn't I? Yeah, I had company. My partner, Kira. No, I wasn't going it alone. Can I finish the story, please? <laughs> we offered to buy the Zephyr for an insanely low price. He was just happy to get anything for it. You know me, Renegade. I've always been a good mechanic. We rented space in a shop nearby, had him drop it off there, and got to work. Since I had spent only a fraction of my budget, I had plenty left over for parts, so I got to work finding suitable replacements and patching her up. I had her in peak form after only a couple of weeks, and with some care, I had managed to physically rebuild the AI core. I wasn't particularly skilled at programming, so Kira took over that part. The problem with Z, essentially, is that she had gaps in her code. Zephyrs have support for hybrid operations, meaning a human can operate the ship in tandem, but they also have adaptive learning. They pick up on a pilot's nuances and write it into their code to improve spaceflight. They also have adaptive personalities. While they have legal limitations written into their code, they can sort of blossom into unique individuals. The problem we ran into is that, for one, Z had been at the mercy of, essentially, a drunk. This guy often operated his ship while under the influence, and that seeped into Z. And then, of course, she took damage during a crash, and lost significant portions of her base programming as well as the learn traits. When we got her, she was... well... Holding a conversation with her was like trying to talk to a drunk child. And because we were buying her secondhand, we didn't have the manufacturer's warranty, so we couldn't just wipe it and reinstall the base AI code. Kira, being a programming whiz, jumped in and started cleaning it up. She got rid of all the adaptive learning pieces, manually regressed some of the processes, doing what she could to give Z a factory reset. Once all of the corruption had been removed, we were left with huge gaps in the code, most of them in the interpersonal communication algorithms. Z could fly the ship, but she couldn't communicate with us. We could have made do. I was happy. I mean, I had a beautiful, powerful ship that I paid peanuts for, but... Kira just couldn't let it go. She took Z as a personal challenge. I went off-world for a few days to handle some business, and when I came back, I found Kira snoozing in the pilot's seat, empty energy stems all around her, and the servers thrumming with life. Before I could process what was going on, I heard Z speak. She wanted to surprise you, she said. Kira had worked nonstop without sleep for three days to surprise me by writing her own personality into Z's code to fill in the gaps. 
the decisions she would make in a given situation, a set of morals she tended to follow, some of her preferences, like her favorite music, Z ended up being a partial fingerprint of Kira. <laughs> no, her sense of humor, uh, well, you may have noticed that Waylix aren't particularly hilarious. They enjoy our humor and they are good natured, but there's no such thing as a Waylix comedian. <laughs> So Kira left that part to me, to teach Z as I saw fit. But I had a fully functional AI. One that learned more quickly than the average. That was Kira's influence too. She was always so smart. She just picked things up so naturally without even seeming to try. Yeah, that's why Z always has her nose in my business and is always looking out for me. <laughs> that's all Kira. Yeah, she did care about me a lot, and I cared about her so much. You want me to tell you about her? <sighs> Renegade, it's not a happy story. Yeah, I, I do trust you with it. I all right. My final year in the Navy, I was given a special assignment. I was told a politician had found herself embroiled in a power struggle with an unknown entity. This person was leaving threats in her residence, at her office, everywhere, to scare her into not running for re-election. It was someone on the inside who was distinctly pro-human, which is a disgusting sentiment given that we were the ones that edged our way in, not vice versa, but I digress. The politician was a Waylix. She felt that her own life was in danger, but it was the life of her adult daughter that she was most concerned with. So until she was able to root out the culprit and guarantee safety, she requested a small team to protect her daughter, and when I say small, I mean a detail of four combat specialists and a pilot. Specifically, a pilot who was known for getting out of tight spaces. A pilot who was good at staying under the radar. The politician was given dossiers and requested me specifically as the pilot to fly her daughter's hideout spacecraft. She knew that if we were found out, I would be able to maneuver us out of there and keep her daughter safe. She charged me with this task herself in her office, and that's how I met Kajani Lorana. <laughs> A seven-foot-tall, imposing Waylix senator staring me down and telling me coolly that there would be hell to pay if any harm came to her daughter. <laughs> I got put onto this high-tech stealth ship with the task of guarding what I thought was going to be a prissy princess, but then this beautiful Waylix woman walked onto that ship and I saw those big sparkling silver eyes and I knew I was done for. <laughs> Kira Lorana was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. And when she tired of her own books for company, she would sometimes join me in the cockpit, asking questions about the ship and asking me to give her little lessons on how to fly it. Over the weeks we were together, we started talking more candidly about life and space exploration and where both of our species had come up from, and then one quiet night she asked about my history. In the past, I hadn't cared about my criminal ties. I was proud of it. Cocky, even. <laughs> I thought it made me intimidating, but telling her was one of the most terrifying things I'd ever done. Yet, she was the only person who didn't look at me with pity or disgust when she found out. She simply accepted my story for what it was and told me she was proud of me for making the best of the situation I had. We, uh, we kissed that night. <laughs> A week later, the culprit was apprehended and Kira returned home to Kajani, but we remained in touch. I still had a few months left of service, but we would send each other hollow vids, messages, little gifts from time to time. We made plans. When I got out of the service, we were going to travel first, because I'd never been anywhere outside of my missions, and then afterward she wanted to come with me when I took on private contracts. On my first day on my own, with no aces or galactic navy to dictate my schedule, she took me here, her birthplace. I had never seen anything so strange and magical as the mountains covered in pink trees and the opalescent spires of the city, 
the bioluminescent green algae in every body of water and the clear night sky, the clearest I'd ever seen on any planet, and the quiet peacefulness of it all. We had so many plans. We were going to get a ship, take some jobs, and see what destiny had in store for us. It was going to be the two of us, forever. But she died before any of that could happen. It's been a couple of years, and I can function again, but I miss her so damn much. What happened? She was sick. Some Wailix hereditary disorder that I can't even pronounce. It took her from us in a matter of weeks. Kajani and I, we both took turns at her bedside, keeping her comfortable, reading to her. When we lost her, it ended up bringing the two of us closer together. That's why she mothers me. And that's why she hired me to help her with all of this. She knows I can be trusted because she's seen me at my most vulnerable. I can count on one hand the number of people I've trusted with that side of me. You're one of them. <sighs> Thank you for listening and for caring. Aside from Kajani, I hadn't talked to anyone about Kira. And it feels better, somehow, to talk about her. Having Z around helps. It's part of Kira that will always be with me. But this helps a lot, really. And uh, now you know. That's what Z meant when she said she was a blend of many people. Kira, mostly myself for the flying and the snark, and you. Your sense of humor, apparently, if you can even call that humor. <laughs> I forgot how easy you are to talk to. Kinda feels like old times. Don't go getting a big head about it. What? <laughs> Stop grinning at me like that, what? Whatever. Are we friends again? Yeah. Yeah, I guess we are. <laughs> Come here. For what it's worth, Renegade, despite everything that happened between us, I missed this. I missed you. And I'm glad to have you back. I'm glad you feel the same way. No, I'm not just saying that because I'm a little tipsy. Besides, you've seen me drunk. You know I can't lie when I've been drinking. <laughs> of course I remember Mylan's birthday party. I didn't realize Bresum had that high of an alcohol tolerance. For stocky little bug-looking things, they really can hold their liquor. But as I recall, the three of us and that Manxil kid won about 850 credits playing beer pong with a bunch of teenagers from a rival gang. The Emerald Sun, wasn't it? <laughs> Remember when we helped ourselves to Ripley's supply of Earth bourbon? <laughs> God, he was so mad, and we were too shit-faced to care. <laughs> I remember having a vague thought that he was gonna kill us, and when we woke up the next morning, hungover as all hell, I hoped he would kill us as a mercy. <laughs> Always my partner in crime. Now, there's still plenty to do in the city that's not crime, and all of them are things you've never done thanks to being shackled to the aces, so we're going to do them all. The Waylix have this game that's kind of like mini-golf mixed with bumper cars. You haven't lived until you've shot yourself around a giant glowing golf course while inside of a massive golf ball that moves via jet propulsion. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. Beat me at that, and maybe we'll talk about me teaching you how to fly the Zephyr. 
maybe. And then I'm going to take you to an art museum where you drink this Whalix alcohol to properly enjoy the artwork, because it comes alive only for viewers under the influence of this stuff, but it fades off in about 90 minutes, give or take. If I recall correctly, it's distilled from one of the plants native to Dagas. And then before we go back to the ship, I'm taking you to this amazing bakery. You would not believe how delicious Whalix desserts are. Did you know the Whalix import thousands of kilos of berries from Earth every year because they're so partial to them? Yep, they just don't grow well anywhere but Earth, so they pay top credits to get their hands on some. Yes, Kira did show me all of these things. And now I want to share them with you. A toast. To old friends. And to new beginnings. Renegade, the captain is requesting your presence on the bridge. Okay, I think the combat readiness check is looking good. Did you make that change we talked about? Confirmed. Great. And what's the readout from the turrets? Scans indicate peak performance and ammunition is full. Perfect. Here's hoping we don't actually have to use them, but I'd rather- Have it and not need it, then need it and not have it. Yeah. Good morning, Renegade. <laughs> Hope I didn't wake you. Good. Um, the senator pinged me. She has an update for us. <laughs> of course I'm happy. I might finally get to see some action. No, I had a good time on Dagas. I really did. But there's lives at stake here. I just want to see everyone safe, okay? Have a seat. Z patch us through. Opening a secure comms channel to Senator Lorana. Andromeda? You look... relaxed. You took my advice. Yes. Between you and Renegade here, I took my first proper day off in nearly two years. I'm glad to hear it. It's long overdue. Yeah, well, don't get used to it. It won't become a habit. I don't like taking too much time off. I know you too well to have such lofty aspirations, Andromeda. You appear to be in a good mood. Positive news, then? Yes. The vessel docked safely in Elmea, and the refugees have been brought onto another ship bound for the capital. I took the liberty of sending a passenger-class cruiser. I wanted to give them some sense of comfort, the poor things. So they're being cared for? Very well, I assure you. They're being taken to a safe haven, where they'll be comfortable and protected. And if they wish, they'll be able to testify against the Aces. Testify? Are we going after an entire Centaurus gang now? We are building a case against them, yes. I was hoping that perhaps you might testify as well, both of you. If we have enough of a solid case to put a warrant out for their leader, then we might see an end to all this. Kijani, it won't be that easy. I haven't seen Ripley in years, and there are things that happened under his care, if you can call it that, that I wouldn't even dare to speak of. I'm sure Renegade feels the same way. I suspected you both might say that. Very well. I shan't push you. We may have enough to go on anyway. How so? We found some additional information. Footage from Theta Station, just after Commander Rojex's murder. I'm sending you a vid. Open it. Do you see that ship docking in the private bays? Renegade, is that? That's what I thought. Your old ship. Now, Angus's. That ship did not follow proper check-in procedure, so no one knew it was there. Until this vid was given to us. So how did we get the footage? Cameras from private bays aren't accessible to the public, only the private owner. And why now? This should have been put forward immediately after the murder. There was an employee drinking on the job and had been in the habit of pulling footage selectively to avoid being caught. Apparently, his guilty conscience got the better of him and he took it to his superiors. Any interesting connections with the owner? Nothing that we found. I'm sending you what we have in case any details stand out to you, but she appeared to be clean. See, please fast forward the footage to 3 hours, 24 minutes and 3 seconds. 
Whoa. That's definitely Angus. Blood on his hands and everything. Boarding in a hurry. If you look at the timestamp, you'll notice it was about 15 minutes after Rojex was murdered. Holy shit. So Angus killed him. By working backwards and pulling some strings, we were able to request private security footage that shows Angus entering and leaving Rojex's quarters. Furthermore, the ace's symbol was painted on Rojex's wall. We believe it was meant as a calling card. Local officials recognized it and immediately ran a search of anyone with criminal ties to the Aces. They cross-referenced it with facial recognition on the station's surveillance system. And I was the first to come up because I was docked there and had been on the main security cams less than half an hour before. Precisely. What's important, though, is that we now know that the Aces murdered Commander Rojex and that it happened in between the mutiny and the kidnapping of the scientists. What's on your mind? Agreed. Angus would never make that kind of move without orders. With the exception of the mutiny, he's never been much of a self-starter. We know that the ship received a transmission while docked. While we don't have the content, we trace the signal to Centaurus City. My current theory is that he received orders to take out Rojex. As my searches within the government have turned up empty, it looks to me as though Rojex was his main contact, and somehow became a loose end. You disagree? No, they're right. Ripley wouldn't just cut off his main connection to government. He'd kill someone close to his connection, though. And with the symbol clearly painted on the wall like that, I think Rojex may have been a warning to the actual connection. You mean Rojex wasn't our mole? I don't think so. At least he wasn't the only one. Rojex worked with any number of connections within the galactic government. But he was firmly pro-human. So it's safe to assume whoever he was working for is human. Possibly, but we're making an awful lot of assumptions here. What else do we know for a fact? There is one more concrete thing. We've located their ship. Angus is keeping the scientists near you. They're being held hostage in orbit around Epsilon. Why didn't you lead with that? Let's go. I knew you'd say that. My team is assembled on board the Victoria and is en route to your location, accompanied by a secondary support vessel. They should rendezvous with you in an hour or so. You are free to command them as you see fit. Take prisoners if you like, but you are authorized to use lethal force once the scientists are safely away. The aces are dangerous. We know that better than anyone. Be careful, Andromeda. I always am. That is still up for debate. Call me when the operation is complete. <laughs> well, time to suit up. Hey, are you okay with all of this? I mean, I know you don't care for Angus, but what about the rest of the crew? Some of them we've known since we were kids. If taking them down doesn't seem right to you, I'd be happy to let you hang back. I wouldn't judge you. Well, of course I want you to come with, but not if it's going to take a toll on you. I'm not Ripley. I don't force people into things. Okay. If you say you're sure, then I believe you. I know that look. You've been chewing on something for the last couple of days. Spit it out. Alright, I promise I will give you the benefit of the doubt and not immediately get angry. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, I do really think the traitor is in the inner circle of the government. Why? You think Senator Lorana is dirty. Why would you think that? I see. No, I'm not mad. Um, I understand where you're coming from. I checked her out myself. No, really. 
As much as it pained me to do so, she was one of the first people I checked. I'm not supposed to have access to that kind of info. (laughs) Kira may have built in some resources that I should not have in my possession. She originally did it to keep an eye on her mother while we were away, since more than one person wanted her dead. But I kept checking in on Kajani long after Kira died, and when all this started, I searched every data trail to see if she or anyone she worked with might be corrupt. While she can be cutthroat and is cunning enough to put most leaders to shame, she hasn't done anything out of line. Nor does she have any contact with the Aces. I looked for their digital fingerprints. They weren't there. How did I know what to look for? Uh, I might have repurposed the secure key from your comms device when you came on board. Yes, well, I didn't trust you then. (laughs) I'm sorry. Here, take the extra blaster. I know I usually carry two, but I'm going to be a little weighed down as it is. I'll be carrying things that go boom. Assuming all the intel was correct, and Angus hasn't peeled off to resupply anywhere, then there's a shit ton of that serum on board the ship intended for distribution. That can't happen. The plan is to split Kajani's forces into three teams. One team boarding through the main entrance doors by the bridge, and one team joining us through the cargo hatch. We'll move in a pincer formation, taking them down as we go, and lock them in at the crew quarters. The remaining team will slip in behind us and collect the scientists, and when we hear that they're safely away, then the main objective becomes to blow Angus's ship and all its cargo to dust. And if I get a chance to kick Angus in the shins while I'm at it, I'll gladly take that opportunity. Just promise me you'll be careful, alright? Good. Let's get ready. Rescue team has confirmed the scientists are safely aboard the ship, Captain Hayes. What are your orders? Keep placing charges. I'm setting the last one of four in the cargo bay right now. Two have been placed on the bridge. One more is being placed near the crew cabin. We've killed off most of them, but the big brute and a few stragglers are about ready to break the door down. Once they get through, it's over for us. Place two more charges in the engine room and notify me when it's done, then get the hell out. It will take time, Captain. I'll buy you some of that. I'm going to Angus. Just get back to your own ship when you've finished setting them, got it? Don't wait for further orders, just clear out of range. But Senator Lorana said- To follow my commands, didn't she? Do not place yourself at risk. Do as I ask, understood? Yes, Captain. Good luck. Same to you. Okay, it's set. Let's go. The remaining crew are pinned down in the sleeping quarters. Let's go take over there, see if we can't get Angus to chat and give Kajani's team a chance to get off the ship. Renegade, if push comes to shove. What do you mean you're not leaving me behind? This is my mission. One I've accepted. One I've sworn my life to. This is not your fault. This is Ripley's fault. And you dying for his selfishness isn't going to help anyone. Let me do the talking, okay? (laughs) Oh, isn't this sweet? Our little cockroach lived, scurried off, and found you once again. How long has it been, Hayes? Not long enough, Angus. I hoped I'd never have to look at your hideous face again, but here we are. Neither of us are good at small talk, so let's cut the bullshit. What's Ripley planning? (laughs) Are you gonna pay me more than Ripley's offering? Sure. I'll give you your life. I doubt Ripley will do the same when he finds out that the scientist escaped from right under your nose. I've got something more valuable to offer him. The chance to get revenge on his former recruits both of whom seem to have forgotten who fed and clothed them when they were starving, snot-nosed orphans. 
Yeah, brainwashing a bunch of kids into a life of crime is a real class act. One day, he's got you stealing someone's wallet, then before you know it, you're destroying people's lives and profiting from it. Trafficking, Angus? Really? The Aces have gotten into some seriously low shit if they're making their money off the sale of people. 150 people to be exact, totaling millions of credits worth of investments. And this valiant asshole friend of yours set them all free and covered their tracks. We still haven't been able to track them down. Ripley gave me an order not to come home until they're all accounted for. And I intend to go home. I suggest you stay out of my way. You're doing his dirty work for the promise of his shit rolling downhill onto you? I never pegged you as a smart man, Angus, but damn, read the writing on the wall. And who are you to judge, princess? If that little hero hadn't messed up with your pathetic smuggling operation all those years ago, you would have been right alongside us, and getting your cut like the rest of the family. Captain, the charges have been set and we're clear of the ship. See, that's where you're wrong, Angus. I'm no saint, but there are certain lines that even I draw. There's no amount of money you could offer me that would convince me to enslave other people. That's certainly not what Ripley said when he found out about your little hero here. I believe the exact quote was, Wish I had kept the other one instead. This wouldn't have happened with her in charge. What the fuck are you talking about? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> you disgust me. The feeling is mutual, sweetheart. It's a shame we'll have to cut this reunion short, but I am sick of talking. Look out! Boys! Take him down, and let's get to the fighters. Come on. You weren't hit, were you? Good. Shut the door and shoot the control panel. Well, that will hold them for a little while. We need to go. No, I'm fine. Just grazed me, that's all. Set the countdown. Detonating in 90 seconds. What? I told you I was just grazed. Okay, maybe it's a little more than a grace. Can you be pedantic later, please? Oh, there goes the door. We've got to get out of here. <laughs> no, I can walk. My legs work just fine. Okay, I'll put my arm around you, but you're not carrying me. What are you muttering about? This is the second time I've gotten shot because of you. <laughs> well, third time's a charm if you want another go. <laughs> I thought it was pretty damn funny. Z, get us out of here. Captain, your vitals are waning. I'll be fine, Z. Your biomonitor says otherwise. Just go. That whole ship is about to be blown to pieces. We gotta get clear. Acknowledged. <laughs> Detonation in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> there she goes. Good fucking riddance. Bogies incoming. Three small fighter craft are tailing us. Shit. A few of Angus's men must have made it out. <laughs> Initiating evasive maneuvers. Please take the captain to medbay and connect her to the system. No, I'm fine. It's just... I'm just coughing up a little blood. I'll be alright, see. We can worry about me once we're not being chased. No, listen. Z can't do it alone. There's something to be said for human intuition in a situation like this. <laughs> I need to... 
I need to help her get us out of here. <laughs> Renegade, I must insist that you take the captain to Med Bay at once. I will continue evasive maneuvers until you are able to assist. Don't you dare... Put me down. I can... I can... Now booting Medbay services. Please act quickly, Renegade. She doesn't have much time. Mind the medical droid. It will begin working to stabilize her if it can. Please return to the cockpit, Renegade. I cannot shake the remaining two fighters that are tailing us. You do not need to be at her side to keep an eye on her. Now pulling up her biomonitor on cockpit display. You are claiming that you do not have authorization to go pilot the ship. That is incorrect. You are no longer a guest. Captain Hayes has given you co-pilot authorization. Yes, she did. Renegade, I do not mean to increase your stress levels, but if you do not take command of the Zephyr soon, the captain's health will make no difference as we will all be debris orbiting this planet. A wise decision. It does not appear that you require my assistance to fly this spacecraft. You take to it quite naturally. Firing main guns. One remaining. Please take us into that debris field and loop around. Target destroyed. No enemy pilots remain. Scans of the area indicate that there are no survivors and the enemy ship is a complete loss. I will send a status update to the Senator's team on board the Victoria. Well done, Renegade. Renegade, something is wrong. I am losing the captain's vitals. You must help her. Hailing the Victoria, this is the Zephyr AI under command of Captain Hayes. The captain has suffered severe injuries and her life signs are failing. The co-pilot is currently administering CPR, requesting immediate assistance. Please help. Certainly, Renegade. Epsilon-3 was originally a Manxil planet. The arid climate suited their exoskeleton biology and their underground city infrastructure. After 40,000 years, they established a population distribution plan and began expanding to nearby planets as far as Epsilon-6. Very well. Horus is a mostly barren planet settled by human mining colonies. Bressum workers were invited to join them in a concerted effort to mine precious metals and terraform small regions of the planet. Wary of outsiders, but keen to trade, the humans and Bressum of Horus have created a unique infrastructure that is well funded by their own labor. The school children on Horus consistently have academic scores on par with the best rated private schools in the capital. Saxon is a unique planet. It was virtually untouched by settlers until the Friendship Accord of 2473, when religious groups from the four council species agreed to settle a new planet while working together. Saxon poses a unique challenge in that it never experiences nighttime, thanks to its unique positioning between three stars. Renegade, why are you inquiring about random planets? Is this a tactic to occupy your mind so that you do not think of the events of the last few days? What do you mean that you are doing this for me? Renegade, I appreciate the very human sentiment of trying to keep me distracted, but I have 128 logical cores purely dedicated to processing communications and searching databases, I'm afraid I have more than enough leftover resources to process emotion, 
or the closest thing I have to emotion. If you wish to tie up my resources, I can simultaneously boot several old Earth video games in the cockpit. There is one in particular that has recently received its 212th remaster and has over 70,000 mods, most of which are rather entertaining. While the game does exist, that was meant to be a joke to lighten your spirits. I realize, though, that you meant well to try to distract me. The thought was very kind. How are you holding up, Renegade? Your biomonitor shows signs of sleep deprivation, decreased motor function and reaction time, and lower core temperature, among other typical signs of human depression. This is not surprising given what you have gone through, but Captain Hayes would want me to encourage you to rest. She would want me to send for a medical professional to look you over. Very well, I will refrain for now, Renegade. Senator Lorana is approaching the docking bay. You'd best leave for your errands and meet her halfway. I will be just fine, Renegade. Thank you for your concern. I have found vids of baby elephants from the human homeworld. I believe this will suffice to entertain me until you return. Goodbye for now. Renegade, I'm glad I caught you in time. I have news. May I walk with you? Thank you. My sources on Centaurus City tell me that Ripley has left the planet with only a few members of his gang in tow. Any ideas where he might go? He has a safe house on Myra. Interesting. We must be getting close then. I suppose that's true. He may be driven to act now that we've destroyed his supply, decimated his biggest ship, and killed several members of his gang, as well as his new right-hand man. Not to mention, he probably knows that you're alive and working for me. Unfortunately, he probably has also heard about what happened to Andromeda, and seeks to kick us while we're down. Dr. Andre has confirmed that he and the other scientists were not aware of any other production of the serum. There may be more stored somewhere, but it appears we broke the main supply chain. Yes, the scientists are currently back on task with manufacturing a cure. We encouraged them to take a bit of time to rest after their ordeal, but they all insisted upon using every last moment to be productive. In the meantime, we've had no further outbreaks of the Gengo, so for the moment at least, further testing appears to be stopped. This will give us a chance to get caught up and save lives. But at what cost? How are you doing, Renegade? I know how difficult the last few days have been for you. As well as can be expected, then. And Z? Don't give me that look. I know that AI is far more than she seems, and I know she must be reacting in her own way. Vids of baby elephants. Hmm, that's what I thought. Perhaps I should speak to her. She always has regarded me so warmly. Hmm, I'll go pay her a visit. Our next move. For now, I'll have my people keep surveillance on my Ra to see if Ripley passes through there. If you think of any other places he may be, please tell me. Otherwise, we wait for Ripley to make his next move. Have you slept at all? Or eaten? <sighs> you must try to get some rest. And soon. You can't keep on like this, however difficult it is to find sleep. Uh, I'm not going to argue with you. All I will say is that Andromeda wouldn't want you running yourself into the ground. We have some time to breathe. Use it, please. <sighs> no.
No change. I had hoped. You'll tell me if anything happens. Thank you, Renegade. I was serious about trying to get some rest, by the way. Here, I brought you this. A blanket, so that you might be a little more comfortable while you spend the night at her bedside. Don't look so surprised. I've had guards patrolling this facility to protect both of you. They tell me that aside from meeting with me and performing daily maintenance on the Zephyr, you haven't left her side since she was injured. You needn't explain yourself to me, Renegade. I understand completely. In fact, if you weren't here dearly, I'd be here myself. As it is, though, I trust you to look out for her. It's been too long since she had someone at her side. Yes, Kira did fill that role. And I've been worried every moment since Kira's funeral. Andromeda is strong, there's no doubt, but she takes on too much. I know the two of you have a tumultuous past, and I don't quite know all the details, but I do know that she seemed happier to have you around. You are good for her. And if you hadn't been there to keep her alive on the Zephyr after she was shot, she wouldn't have had a chance. No, don't blame yourself. Angus may have been aiming for you, but if you hadn't been there with her, she would have still confronted him alone, and she likely wouldn't have even made it off of his ship. So rest assured, Renegade, that you've done everything you can for her. I know it's easier said than done, but try not to be too hard on yourself. Now, go rest. Let me know if there's any change. I'll come by first thing in the morning to check on you both. Renegade. Ugh. Hello. I didn't mean to wake you. Ah, you're crushing my hand. It's okay. I know you didn't mean to. I feel like I've been shot. <laughs> Sorry. I feel... really tired. Where are we? The capital? How long have I been out? Four days? I gotta... What do you mean, no? What about the scientists? The, the refugees? Oh, okay. I understand. Later. They're okay, though? Good. Renegade, you look like shit. Have you slept at all? Was it that bad? I was legally dead for three minutes. <laughs> how, how did you... CPR? And Z hailed the Victoria. How'd they get to us so quickly? <laughs> well, I guess I'm lucky they were already most of the way to us then. What ended up happening with the other fighters that were chasing us? You flew the Zephyr? Through a debris field? In the ship is intact? N no damage? Z is... Z's okay, right? 
Oh, gosh. She must be worried sick. You've been visiting her. What, every day? That's really kind of you. She likes company. And she worries about me so much. You should have seen the time I stayed overnight off the ship without telling her first. She called the local authorities and reported me missing. <laughs> yes, really. She cares a lot. So, I'm really glad you've made some time for her. She complimented your flying skills? Really? Well, don't go getting a big head about it. Her last owner was a drunk who crashed her into a building. Her standards for a good pilot are pretty low. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. If she says you did well, then I'm sure you did. I wouldn't have given you co-pilot authorization if I didn't think you could handle it. Ah. <sighs> No, it doesn't hurt too badly. Who's the doctor on duty? Dr. Endra. Nice. And, uh, where is he now? No, no reason. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm not planning anything. <sighs> Okay, fine. I might have been hoping he would sign me out of here so I could go back to the... Ah, uh, alright. Staying in bed. Understood. Jeez, I've rarely seen you so serious. What's eating at you? Renegade? Hey. Look at me. What is it? What? Renegade, no. You're not responsible for this. I was the one who jumped in front of the bullet, okay? I made a choice, and I'd make it again. What do you mean, why? Yes, I did hate you, of course I did, but I still thought about you every day we were apart. I missed your companionship, I missed your stupid jokes, I missed you having my back. I spent hours agonizing over why you possibly could have betrayed me like that. I told myself that even if Ripley had ordered you to stab me in the back, you wouldn't have done it. You know, you don't owe me an explanation. You just saved my life. As far as I'm concerned, you don't owe me anything, alright? I care about you. I always have. I lost you for a while. And I just got you back. The moment I saw Angus lift up his pistol, the only thought in my head was that I didn't want to lose you again. I, I just couldn't bear it. What do you mean it was all for me? You worked your way up in the aces so you could protect me? Right. As Ripley's right hand, you'd have access to connections, resources, things that would make it easy for you to hide me from the eyes he has all over the galaxy. You made sure he wouldn't find me? <laughs> I always wondered why he didn't seek me out or press gang me into joining up again after my time in the Navy was up. You must have deleted every trace of me that came through his communications, except the public headlines. Renegade, you kept me free of him. The whole time? 
Why? You loved me? I always wondered if you felt the same way I did. Of course I did. You weren't just my best friend. I always wanted there to be more between us. But even as a teenager, I realized that showing that kind of affection for you would just give Ripley something else to use against me. The first time I fucked up, the first time I stood my ground against one of his orders, he would have hurt you to punish me. So I never let it show. I never wanted you to be put in more danger than you were already in just by being a part of the Aces. We both had a fucked up childhood, Renegade. But through it all, we had each other. And I told myself that was more than enough. That's why your betrayal stung so much. But that's behind us now. You're right. We're both free of the aces now. This conflict is nowhere near over, but... Who knows whether we'll both survive this. I'm just being realistic. I know what a close call this was. I won't pretend we're both out of danger yet. You and I know better than anyone how quickly this could go sideways. So I need to tell you, while I have the chance, I love you. I love you. I'm not made of glass, you know. <sighs> I get it. I was dead in your arms a few days ago. But I'm okay. It doesn't seem real to me either. But I'm right here. What is it? <laughs> yeah, you'd better tell them both. Dealing with Kajani is one thing, but, well, frankly, I'm too scared to cross Z when she's got her mind set to something. I don't want to know what would happen if you didn't let her know I'm okay. <laughs> Send them a message, and then bring your face back over here. We've got a lot of lost time to make up for. Welcome back, Captain. It is good to see you back on board. Thanks, Z. I'm glad to be back. How have you been? Renegade has been performing my daily maintenance and keeping my social interaction algorithms sharp. I have also watched every video of baby elephants available on the extranet. Oh? They are very... cute. <laughs> yeah, they are. Wait till you see baby hedgehogs. Captain, permission to use resources on an extranet search. Granted. Thank you. I have received the notes from Dr. Endra regarding your status and path to recovery. According to his suggestions, you need to take medication in the next ten minutes and rest frequently. Renegade, will you? Very well. I will leave the matter in your hands. Please advise me if you require assistance in getting the captain to follow the doctor's orders. You two are ridiculous. I am perfectly capable of- Your capability is not in question, Captain. However, your lack of motivation to look after yourself is something that would alarm me if I were human. Since I am not human, I see it as an outlier and will leverage Renegade's assistance to eliminate it. I missed you too, Z. I do plan to get some rest, 
But first, I need to lay out some steps for catching Ripley and whoever else may be behind this. Z, pull up my personal data drive. Are you looking for the plans outlined in folder 0421? Yes? Renegade and I have already set that plan in motion. What? That plan involved bugging the offices of every single council member. How could you possibly have- You were unconscious for several days, and then were at the hospital for a few more before you were discharged. We had plenty of time to perform message interception and plant devices in the council offices. Well, then I can help you monitor the data stream. I am perfectly able to manage the data stream and keep up with my regular processes, especially when we're docked as we are. You can rest. I will notify you if anything alarming occurs. Okay, what about plotting courses to nearby systems in case we need to make a break for it? You took care of that too. Um... Okay, give me the inventory count. I'll make up a list of the supplies we- Already completed. <sighs> what good am I as a captain if I have nothing to do? You are an excellent captain, and you also have an excellent crew to handle things for a while. Renegade is right. You will do no good to us or anyone else if you are dead. Please take your rest and enjoy it. It seems I'm outnumbered on this one. <laughs> All right, I'll head to my quarters. Lie down for a while. Sure, Renegade, you can help me. And before you ask, no, you may not carry me. Let me have this one thing. <laughs> Rest well, Captain. You two really don't need me, do you? What? You seem to have things well in hand. To the point where I'm redundant. <laughs> No, I do appreciate it. I'm just not used to it. Z can talk at me all she likes, but ultimately, she can't leave the servers. She's never been able to stop me from repairing things or running errands. But now, with you helping her, I don't have much choice but to relax. At least I know that there are no better hands for the ship to be in. <sighs> no, it doesn't hurt too badly yet. The painkillers are starting to wear off, though. Yeah, I'll take the meds. Hand me the bottle. Oh, y you don't have to... Yeah, three of them. Thank you. I can lay down on my own. <laughs> yes, I am comfortable. Wait, Renegade. Will you stay? Please? Yeah, I mean it. I want your company. And besides, there's a lot more room to snuggle on this bed than there was in the hospital bed. <laughs> you can come closer. There. I assume this still counts as taking it easy. Hmm. Good. I just hate to see you look so worried. I'm gonna be fine. Dr. Andra told you I was recovering nicely. Yeah, you're right. We might come up against worse things than this. We might not make it. But try not to think about that right now. I'm not asking you to believe in a fantasy. 
We've both seen too much shit in our lives to know that there's a perfect solution to situations like this. I'm asking you to enjoy this exact moment in time where both of us are safe and healthy and being looked after. Please. And I need you to do me a favor. Get some sleep. <laughs> Look at you. You haven't really slept more than a few hours a day since I woke up, and Kajani told me you didn't sleep at all before that. You need rest. Don't worry about keeping watch over the ship or monitoring the data. Z will notify us. She's got this. Don't you, Z? Yes, Captain. Now please stop listening. As you wish. <laughs> See? She's got it under control, so you can rest. You don't have to leave, Renegade. Yes, I did say you need sleep. But if you're comfortable with it, I'd rather you stay here. I would sleep much better if you were beside me. Yes, really. Come back over here. <laughs> Will you hold me? Hmm. Can I ask you something? Let's just imagine for a minute that we do make it through this. Ripley gets brought to justice and your ties to the aces are severed forever. You're free to do whatever you want, go wherever you want. Where would you want to go? What would you want to do? I know for a fact that you have dreams, or you did have them once. When we were teenagers, you told me that you had a whole list of places you wanted to see and things you wanted to do, and you told me that you never wanted to speak them aloud, because if they were spoken into existence, then they became something that could be taken away. There's no one here who will take those dreams away from you now, Renegade. Will you share them with me? Just some of them, huh? <laughs> Tell me. The hot springs on Sylvan 4. Yeah, I've heard a lot about them. They say that the water has healing properties and the Bressum have built a water park there. <laughs> Z told me about it once when we were killing time in Dry Dock. Apparently they were fascinated by the old earth water parks and decided to mimic them. That way people could essentially soak in the waters all day without just sitting, you know? They wouldn't realize how much time had passed because they would be just enjoying themselves. That's a really good one. <laughs> what else? A Walex orchestra performance. Oh, yes. No, I've never had the chance to see one perform live. I hear it's one of the most hauntingly beautiful experiences you can have. They use a lot of stringed instruments, and then a few that are kind of woodwind-esque but they're made of this living material that amplifies the notes and it's supposed to be incredible to hear. Of course it's expensive, but after this job, after saving thousands of innocent lives, I think we can afford both the money and the time. We deserve it. <laughs> what else? You want to sample all of the best food in the galaxy. That can be arranged. There's a ton of options. <laughs> well, for one, there's the food festival on Coronix. 
It started out as a trading hub for foodstuffs and accidentally became the food capital of the galaxy. Once during their planetary year, which is about twice every Earth year, they host a massive gathering where all you do is cook and eat. I have never been myself, but the idea has always seemed very alluring. Well, we humans can't eat everyone's food. Manxel food would cause an allergic reaction for the most part. But we can enjoy some Bresom foods and most Wailix foods. Oh no, Manxel can eat everything. <laughs> Somehow. Wailix can only eat human food aside from their own. Bresom can eat only a little of everything. My list... Oh, I wouldn't even know where to start, Renegade. There's so much I want to do. Okay, that's fair. One thing, um... I want to hike the entirety of the Celestial Ridge Trail on Delta One. There's a trail that runs along the primary mountain range in the southern hemisphere of the planet. In the wintertime, it experiences darkness at most hours of the day, a lot like Earth's far latitudes. The trail's lined with these little hostels where you can check in and rest between hikes. The whole thing takes about a week, but you can take it at whatever pace you'd like. Oh no, the trail's very clearly marked with the soft lights and reflective borders, and besides that, it's very wide and even. They maintain it really well so that hikers can focus on the real attraction, the night sky. Apparently, it's even more breathtaking than Daga's. And they have a couple of meteor showers a year that are spectacular, from what I hear. Hmm. I'd love to see it together. I can't promise you what the next few days or weeks are going to look like. But I can promise this. I will try, with every fiber of my being, to keep us both alive so we can do all those things together. I don't want them to be just dreams for you. I want them to become memories. You deserve that. Yes, you do. You were born into nothing, had a shitty father figure who trapped you in an equally shitty life, and you just now got out of it. You risked your life to do the right thing. You deserve a chance to be who you want to be, and it would be my honor to fight to give you that chance. <laughs> yeah, I am getting tired. The medication is kicking in. <laughs> I'm smiling because I haven't felt this safe in my whole life. I'm glad you're here. Sweet dreams, Renegade.
Good morning. How did you sleep? Good. Me too. Yeah, I'm feeling fine. I promise. I'm not just saying that. I'm feeling much better. I'm still a bit sore, but I don't think it'll hurt to get up. That doesn't mean I'm ready to get up. <laughs> get back here. Just let me enjoy this for a minute. I haven't always had the luxury of laying in bed for a while after waking up. Remember that year when we were doing daily runs to the Moreno spaceport from Centaurus? Mm-hmm. Ripley had us awake two hours before dawn to get the shipments moving, and we didn't get back till the city curfew kicked in. Four hours of sleep a night for nearly a year it should have broken us. You know, he never found out that we covered for each other on those runs. Nope. Shortly before the fateful incident that took me away from the Aces, I was ordered to clean up his office. I found a data pad with daily entries, like a journal that he kept during that contract. One of the entries said something to the effect of he didn't understand how we were able to manage with so little sleep, but he chalked it up to teenage energy. He had no idea that we used to tamper with the cams and then trade off guard duty so each of us could catch a nap in transit. <laughs> we didn't just keep each other sane. We kept each other alive. We had to. Given the choice, of course I still would have watched your back. Us being part of the gang didn't have that much bearing on my feelings towards you. We just mesh really well. We always did. Hmm. Hmm. So, how did you get this scar, anyway? Yeah, this one in front of your ear. You didn't have it when I left Centaurus. Assassins? They came for Ripley. And you protected him. Of course you did. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. Whoever sent the assassins probably knew who you were anyway, so even if they had succeeded, you would have been next on their list. And even if that wasn't the case, better the evil you know, right? So they grazed you with the blade when you stepped in? Hmm. And what about this one? On your upper arm? Looks like a plasma bullet entry wound. Hmm. <laughs> you were lucky it was just a ricochet. And it looks like you got medical attention quickly, otherwise you wouldn't have such good mobility. Hmm. Of course I recognize what a plasma bullet wound looks like. Galactic Navy, remember? Oh, I've had my fair share. Look. Took one just below the collarbone in my second year on active duty. It wasn't a particularly special story. We were just pushing back some rogue factions that were harassing colonists on Delta II. One exchange got a little more heated than usual. A civilian got scared and fired an unauthorized shot. We took a couple losses and most of us got injured, but the mission was successful overall. No, I got lucky. It's a little stiff from time to time, but it doesn't really bother me. What about this one on the back of your hand? From the scarring, it looks like something sliced you up pretty badly. <laughs> You 
getting into a back alley brawl. <laughs> Over what? <sighs> well, I know I'm several years too late, but you shouldn't let rival gangs provoke you. Especially not if they're talking shit about me. I promise I can handle it. <laughs> let me guess. Whoever you decked in the face had cybernetic implants, which is why your hand got so screwed up. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing with that amount of force, their face looked a hell of a lot worse than your hand did. Hmm. What do you mean, why am I doing this? We used to patch each other up all the time. I knew every injury, every scar, every freckle. I've missed a lot of opportunities to take stock, so I'm catching up. <laughs> Captain, I'm sorry to disturb you, but I've discovered something in the data stream. Please come take a look when you can. We're on our way, Z. <sighs> Duty calls. <laughs> but let's do this again sometime. Ideally, soon. All right, Z. What do we have? I've intercepted a message detailing a rendezvous between a member of the Council and Ripley. That quickly? Let me see. The test subjects are a loss, but the data from the initial colony experiments has given us the results we were hoping for. We've redeveloped the serum and are ready to begin testing the improved formula on our able-bodied candidates. Bring recruits from your gang to your safe house and I will meet you there. The safe house? My raw. Whoever this is has ordered Ripley and the Aces there to begin juicing them up with this stuff. To what end, and who sent this? Captain, the transmission. What about it? It is only that... Z? Are you hesitating? Yes. I didn't know you could hesitate. Neither did I. What is it, Z? The transmission was sent from Senator Lorana's office. What? No, it's... that's wrong. It, it can't be right. I cross-referenced the data. I remotely recalibrated every device and compared it again. I checked nearly 2,000 times. I am sorry, Captain, but the data is correct. This message was sent from the Senator's personal console in her office, using her network credentials and biometric authentication. See, are you saying... There is no other explanation, Captain. I know. I, I always knew it might be her, but it, it doesn't make any sense. What do you mean, Renegade? Well, yeah, the Aces were tipped off before we arrived to rescue the science team, but she was the one to send me there in the first place. Why bother when she could have just moved them quietly without alerting me, or not moved them at all? Covering her tracks? <sighs> I'm not one to toot my own horn, but if she just wanted to cover her tracks, then why send someone as skilled and as competent as me? Why send someone who literally tracks people down for a living? Sending me guarantees that she would have been found out, not to mention, I was imprisoned shortly after taking the job. She could have simply left me there to rot, and I would have been out of her way. Why get me out of prison, then? And why use me like that? We're closest family. What we went through together, what we suffered. No, no, she never expressed any animosity or blame or anything like that. She never held any jealousy against me for the time I spent with Kira. This can't be happening. Why would Kajani be working with Ripley? Why would she? I 
I know. I always knew it was possible. I just... I have so few people I can trust. And you're telling me I might be losing one of them. That they might be in league with someone who brainwashed me. Put me through hell. You're right, of course. Yes. Yes, I can do this. We'll keep it simple. We confront her with the evidence, that's it. No, combat is not her style. But we'll go armed and prepared regardless. Yes, I'm sure. As long as I've got you by my side, I can bear it. <sighs> Let's gear up and go. Kajani, we need to talk. Andromeda, no. You weren't supposed to be here. You thought I wouldn't find out? I saw the message you sent to Ripley. I know you were... Is this all your blood? What happened? Who did this? I've met Ripley. He did this to you. Renegade, help me move her. Ripley was here. Forced me to send the message. Threatened you and Renegade. If I didn't... Shh. Call for medical. I'm putting pressure on it. You won't be able to call medical. There's a jammer preventing any signal from leaving this room. Andromeda. This was a trap. And you've just sprung it on yourself. Behind the desk. They're set to stun. They mean to take us alive. I can't hail Z and we can't call for help. We need to fight back. And we need to do it quickly or Kajani's gonna die. What? I'm mostly healed. I'll be fine. Renegade, no. Don't draw them off by yourself. I can fight. I can help you. I know someone has to stay with Kajani, but I don't want to be separated from you, please. I don't want them to take you, either. You had better come back to me. Hold on, Kajani. Just hold on. We're going to make it out of this. Captain, I am relieved to hear from you. I've been trying to reach you for the last half hour. I see your biomonitor is active, but showing elevated levels of stress. Renegade appears to be unconscious. What has happened? See, Ripley has them. Ripley has Renegade. It was all a trap to draw us in. He attacked Kajani and then had his guys wait around for us to come to her. Renegade tried to draw them off, but got stunned. I couldn't stop them from being taken. You did not go after them. Kajani was injured. I couldn't leave her. She would have bled out. I had to wait till medical got here. And how is she now? They're stabilizing her. I'm on my way back to you. I will track Renegade's location and begin plotting a course to follow Ripley. I've got to get them back, Z. We will, Captain. We will. Well, it's not my raw. But Ripley always had a handful of safe houses. I suppose the fact that he has one on a derelict space station shouldn't surprise me. 
Bring us in, Z. I have been able to determine that there are 13 life forms inside, but only three of them appear to be conscious. Just Ripley and a couple of guards, I'm guessing. With Angus and Renegade's former crew all dead, that must have made a significant dent in his numbers. And knowing him, he wouldn't bring anyone to this safe house unless absolutely necessary. He doesn't care about his people that much. Then who are the others I'm detecting? I'm hoping one of them is Renegade. As for the rest, well, while the message Ripley had Kajani send was fake, I am certain that the part about him injecting his recruits with the serum was part of his actual plan. Since this is still in the testing phase, those other life forms are likely teenage recruits, impressionable, ready to do Ripley's bidding without question, and not a great loss to him if they die in the process. <sighs> I'm going in. You should wait for the backup that the Senator sent with us. Not a chance. Enough time has been wasted already. Then please leave me on comms so that I can be aware of what is happening. All right. But if this goes sideways, get out of here. Ripley already has Renegade. I can't stomach the thought of him having you two. Captain, I- Promise me, Z. If I tell you to go, go. I promise. Thank you. Well, no welcoming party. It doesn't seem like he cares that I'm here. I am grateful that I cannot experience unease, for I would most certainly be feeling it now. <laughs> I'll feel it for the both of us. How's Renegade doing? Any change? As I shared with you six hours ago, they experienced less than two minutes of consciousness, highlighted by intense physical stress, most likely a struggle, followed by a deep sleeping state, since that time, there has been no change. Unfortunately, the biomonitor tracking is only good on a large scale, and can't pinpoint where exactly in this station they are being held. Once you are closer, I will be able to get more detailed readings. They're here somewhere, Z, and I'm going to find them. Hmm. What are you seeing now? It's a medical facility of some kind. There are people in these beds, but they're strapped in. This looks like the Gengo. This one's almost dead. Is there anyone you recognize? No. They've got an Aces tattoo, though. They're so young. Probably were just a kid when I left. Renegade isn't here, though, and this complex doesn't have any holding cells, so Ripley must have them in the living quarters. Scans indicate there is a hallway to your left. A room at the end of the hall has a single life farm inside. I'll check. It needs a pin code. Compiling most likely codes. No need, I've got it. It's the same passcode he had to his safe when I was a kid. I cracked it open and took back something he'd confiscated. What did he take? Something that belonged to Renegade. I stole it back. Did Ripley find out that it was missing? Oh yeah, he found out. I still have the scar from when he did. Then he knows that this pin code is no longer secure. Mm-hmm. That means this is most certainly a trap, Captain. I know, and I don't care, Z. I'm getting Renegade out of here, at any cost. I will continue doing scans and planning an effective exit route. You will need to be wary. I always am. Renegade. <sighs> what has he done to you? Aside from the biomonitor indicating that Renegade is asleep, I cannot discern what is wrong. They're restrained in a chair. Tubes everywhere. They don't look good, see. Ripley must have used the serum on them, too. Renegade. Renegade, can you hear me? Their heart rate has slightly elevated, Captain. Keep talking to them. Hey, I'm here. Open your eyes. Please, please open your eyes. Hey, hey, it's me. Shh, I've got you. I'm going to get you out of here. I know he used the serum on you. You're going to be all right, though. Screw the numbers. You're going to make it. You've got to. Z, status. Renegade is running a high fever, has an elevated heart rate and blood pressure, 
and appears to be experiencing some respiratory distress. However, there is no way for me to tell whether the danger has passed or whether further changes have yet to happen. They've got the rash too. It usually takes a lot longer to show up, but somehow the symptoms have started early. What? No, I'm not leaving you trapped in here. If this turns you into some kind of mindless killing machine, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But that kind of aggression isn't a common side effect of the serum, at least not what we've seen so far, and... How much did he use on you? Tripling the original dose has not been done yet, according to our knowledge. There is no way of telling what might- I don't care. They're coming with me. I am sending instructions to the Senator's team to provide support now that we've landed. Thank you, Z. Make sure they know that Renegade and all of those kids will need medical help and quickly. Yes, Captain. What? No. No goodbyes. None of that. Stop it. I know how you feel, okay? I love you too. And we're going to get plenty of chances to show each other, okay? Oh, Andy. Why the crocodile tears? Ripley. Well, that was rude. Those were my best guards. At least the best out of what was left. Following your annoying victory over Angus. I see you've become an even better shot than you were a decade ago. Let me retrieve my weapon and I'd be happy to let you experience my marksmanship firsthand. I think you'd make a perfect target. <laughs> You are still the most persistent person I've ever met. I really should have kept you around instead of this... rebel. Hmm. If I had made only one decision differently, you and I would likely be running Centaurus and half the damn sector by now. You and I? What are you talking about? Didn't they tell you? Oh. <laughs> oh, they really didn't share that detail with you. Let me guess. You're still under the impression that they ratted you out, leading to your arrest. That's what happened, yeah. But all's forgiven. We've moved past it. Aren't you going to tell her, Renegade? No. Well, luckily for you, I love telling stories. Get on with it, Ripley. Your beloved didn't rat you out. They took you out of the equation entirely to put you out of harm's way. What? We owed a debt to the Emerald Sons. I botched a deal, and blood was owed in repayment. Specifically, mine. After days of bartering and bargaining with their leader, she finally agreed on a price. My life for the loyalty and ownership of my best recruit. At the time, I had two candidates for that title. I chose you. You were gonna sell me to bail yourself out? To the fucking Emerald Sons? You know what they do to their recruits. Business is business, Andy. Don't give me that shit. Every member of the Suns went through shit that makes me sick to think about, and that's coming from someone who was raised by the Aces. You were going to just give me to them to cover up your mistake. What about you never turn your back on family? Did you forget that part? Evidently, our friend here didn't. When they found out about my plans, they called in an anonymous tip that a smuggling deal was going down, and the seller you were supposed to meet was actually the leader of the Sons, who was trying to pick you up in person to make sure I wasn't trying to trick her. <laughs> in one move, this clever creature managed to not only kill off the Sons' biggest player, but also get you off-world and permanently out of my grasp. They told me it was a simple matter of jealousy, that they were trying to get you out of the picture so that they would be rid of the competition. 
<laughs> I believed them. Not only was I glad to be free of my debt, but it led to the aces absorbing what was left of the suns and increasing my reach and power more quickly than I could have imagined. It gave me a thrill that one of my own could be so cold, so cutthroat. At the time I was proud, I made them my right hand. Of course, after they betrayed me last month, I began to question just how deep the deception ran. I looked through all their personal effects and found a message they'd never sent to you, detailing the pathetic truth. Renegade? Is that true? Why didn't you tell me? Why did you let me spend all of that time hating you? Isn't it obvious? They didn't want you coming back to Centaurus City. Didn't want to put you in my path again. In fact, they made an effort to hide you from me. I suspected some communications were getting lost, but I could never confirm it. Until recently. It's almost sweet, really. The way they'd rather be hated by you even completely isolated from you, then see you hurt. But all of that sentimental sacrifice doesn't matter now. I ended up with both of you in my possession anyway. What are you going to do to them? Hmm. They're a serviceable lab rat for now. If they die, we'll have some adjustments made and use the new and improved version on you. If they live, which is the more likely scenario, well, I'll have my own creation, a super soldier, capable of fulfilling my every order. It won't be long before I am able to make more like them and secure a position of influence for myself. No more. Will I wallow in the scum of the inner city, wasting money on pathetic orphans who will die unceremoniously in a black alley somewhere? Instead, I'll be a man of power who commands respect, regardless of how that respect is won. And when I am certain of the long-term effects of the serum, <laughs> well, I use it on myself. They'll never help you. Renegade is better than you in every way. They'd never act on your whims. Ah, uh, they will. <coughs> they will, because I'll have you in my care, and they'll know full well the consequences of disappointing me. It would be a shame to lose your precious Andy so soon after you finally admitted your feelings to one another. Don't you think? And you'll play along, Andy, or I'll set my sights on them and make sure they suffer. We've both been your puppets long enough, Ripley. Don't you dare think for a moment that we'll do it again. <clears throat> I heard reports that Angus shot you. But it wasn't you he was aiming for, was it? <laughs> Painful, isn't it? Must not be healed all the way. <laughs> Renegade, I'm arranging for an assist from the Senator's tactical team, but it will be about two minutes longer. I am seeing a rapid increase in your muscle mass and improved readings from all of your vitals, as well as intense strain. Are you attempting to break your restraints to assist the captain? <laughs> I know you can do this, Renegade. How did you? Those bindings were supposed to be able to hold you. <laughs> you wanted a super soldier. You've got one. No. No, no. 
Don't forget who fed and clothed you, who raised you. They're done talking, Ripley. We both are. You only raised us for your own selfish motives. You didn't care about us as more than a means to an end. I'm the one who made you into what you are today. We made ourselves into who we are. We made our own fate. And now you've made yours. We'll be fine. <laughs> this was supposed to be a rescue. I guess you'll be the one carrying me out of here, huh? Ah, uh, careful. No, it's okay. I'm going to be quite bruised for a while, but... I'll be okay. Are you sure he's down for the count? Good. I agree. It's best if we let the law handle him. We're not the only ones who are wronged by him. I'm sure there's a galaxy waiting to serve him justice. No. Just because you got turned into something you didn't choose doesn't mean you're a bad person. You're not even his creation. You're nothing like him. I know because just now you had a choice to take revenge on the person who has wronged you the most. And instead of taking it, you rushed over here to hold me instead. Captain. The Senator's forces will be with you in less than 30 seconds. <sighs> Good timing. Do you think we'll get whatever bounty is on Ripley's head? I certainly hope so. I have been considering some new technology as an upgrade. <laughs> and no AI has ever earned it more, Z. Let's make our way back to the ship. spent hours combing through the list of messages and recordings. I must have gone over it ten times, and I didn't find any other communications between other council members and Ripley. Rojex had to be the only connection. Your hunch is correct. Rojex wasn't as careful as he should have been, which works out in our favor. You found something? Recorded messages. Rojex was using the defense budget to fund the development of the serum, and was using his connections to locate the brightest minds and best facilities for the task. According to what we found, he had a change of heart when he saw how many citizens were dying as a result of the unethical testing. In that moment, he became a loose end. And leaving the Aces symbol as a warning led us on a wild goose chase to find out who else was responsible. And we fell for it. We wasted resources trying to figure it out while Ripley took control of the whole operation using what he was able to glean from Rojex. Not to mention, it left your loyalty in question. When that fake message was intercepted, it looked as though all the pieces had fallen into place. It appeared that you were the phantom culprit lurking in the government. And once again, we fell for it. Exactly. His victory would have been handed to him on a silver platter. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't familiar enough with Waylick's anatomy to hit anything immediately critical, and I was excellent at playing dead. At least until you arrived, and I knew your life was in danger. At that point, I had to give up the ruse and try to warn you. You very nearly did die, though. You'd bled out so much that the medical team wasn't sure if you were going to make it. True, but I was content with my fate. I knew my body would be found and I'd be absolved once the footage from my personal recording device was recovered. And I knew you'd put the pieces together once you found out. Will this be enough to incriminate Ripley? Between that and your testimony, plus that of Dr. Endra's team, I don't see any way he comes out of this. Will my testimony be enough to keep those kids out of prison? If you and Renegade both attest to the treatment you endured, then I believe so. But, Renegade may be incriminating themselves by making a statement. Will they do it? I can't speak for them, Kajani. You'll have my testimony either way, but 
Don't put their name down yet. How are they doing? No worse than they were yesterday, at least. Dr. Indra took them out of the medically induced coma this morning, but they still haven't woken up yet. Well, if Dr. Indra saw fit to do that, then they must be improving, right? I don't know. He said... He said that they were able to purge the remaining serum from their system. He could guarantee there wouldn't be any further damage occurring based on the tests that his team was able to do. But we won't know the extent of what already happened until they wake up. If they wake up. Is that a possibility? The dose was three times what everyone else had gotten. And I think they overdid it when they broke free to help me and to fight Ripley. How did it all go so wrong so fast? One moment we were boarding the ship with Ripley in custody, we were getting medical care, and then they just dropped and started convulsing. I keep seeing it over and over in my head. Is that why you haven't slept or eaten? How could I? At least going through all of these documents and messages has kept me busy. Helped take my mind off it. Uh, Andromeda. I'm sorry this is taking such a toll on you. When this is all over, I want you to take some time off. I don't I know. They haven't woken up yet. There's the trial to consider, your testimony to give. The maintenance on the Zephyr is not done. There's a pile of contracts to take that would make you money. There's a long list of excuses you can come up with. But I'm confident that Renegade will pull through. Ripley will face justice, and those poor children that were in his care will regardless be in a safer situation than the one they were in. And I'm not letting you take even a single contract from me until you've taken some time off. So get this through your thick human skull, Andromeda. When this is over, you're going to rest. I'm going to make sure of it. <sighs> okay. And in the meantime, here's a bit of good news. While your ship itself is still getting upgraded, Z has received some additional calls and memory to bolster her resources, as well as improved remote communications devices. Not just further range, but better encryption. She'll always have a line to government resources for as long as you are employed by me. <laughs> she'll be excited about that. Oh, trust me, she already is. You've been in communication with her? I've been spending time on the Zephyr, overseeing her upgrades myself. I've enjoyed talking to her. Kajani, there's something you should know about Z. I know, Andromeda. She's too like Kira for me to have missed those uncanny similarities. I knew Kira was gifted, but to see her personality programmed into an AI. I wanted to tell you. To share it with you. I just didn't know how to bring it up. I didn't know if it would hurt even more. I still have days where she says something Kira used to say and I spend the rest of the day crying in my quarters. I couldn't imagine how much worse it would be for you. Especially since it's just a partial fingerprint. It's not completely her. I understand. I imagine I would have done the same in your shoes. And to be honest, I think that finding out about it much earlier than this would have been more painful. But she is here now, and I've enjoyed spending time with her. It makes me proud to see that part of Kira lives on, and that a part of her is constantly looking out for the both of us. Yeah. I'll leave you alone for now, but no more combing through documents, understood? We've got what we need for the trial. Just rest and finish healing. Understood. Renegade. He's finally done. He can't hurt anyone else anymore. And his whole plan fell apart because of you. You stopped him. You've got more courage than anyone else I've ever met, you know that? <sighs> I feel awful asking this because you've already done so much for me, but... Could you please... Please fight this. 
please. Just... You have to be alright. I don't know what I'm gonna do if you're not okay. Please. Please wake up. Renegade? Hey, you're awake! Sorry, I'm so sorry. Did I hurt you? You promise you're just sore. Gods, I was so worried about you. I'm gonna call for Dr. Endra, have him take a look at you. No, he said the moment you wake up, I need to- Are you sure you feel fine? Okay, but if that changes at all, I'm calling him. What? Oh, Renegade, don't worry about me. They're just bruises. They're healing. They'll be completely gone in a couple of weeks. Well, I also had a couple of fractured ribs, and my wrist is broken, but don't worry about me. I'm bandaged up, I'm taking it easy, I'm well on my way to recovery. Don't stress about Ripley. He's locked up and under some of the tightest security this galaxy has ever seen. The trial starts next week. As it is, there's no way he doesn't end up in a maximum security prison for the rest of his life. Well, I'm going to testify. But less about this whole operation and more about how he treats his recruits. I don't want those kids to be in prison for the rest of their lives just because of who raised them. I'm going to tell them about my childhood and the Aces, in hopes that they get at least the same offer that I did. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. Kajani will be glad to hear it, too. If we can both show the world that Ripley forced them into criminal acts, then they will have a chance at a normal life. Speaking of our past, about what happened on Centaurus all those years ago. No, I, I'm not mad you kept the truth from me. I, I mean, I do wish you would have told me, but I get why you didn't. My reaction, at the time, had to be genuine or Ripley would have figured it out. What do you mean? He was supposed to be where? So you were hoping for a chance to shoot him during the confusion? Oh my gods. You were hoping to take them both out at the same time, weren't you? Ripley and the leader of the Emerald Suns but he didn't end up delivering me in person, so that plan went to hell. Why did you visit me in prison afterward? He made you? Oh, he wanted you to prove your loyalty to him, didn't he? He wanted to see you rub it in my face so that he would believe your story. Well, it worked. You broke my heart that day. I thought, up until that point, that maybe you had feelings for me too. But those actions made me realize that you didn't. That you were only in it for yourself. And then it dawned on me that I'd likely never see you again. That should have made me happy, given how you had just betrayed me, but it devastated me even more. I was hurt and angry, but I didn't cry until you'd left. And then I cried for hours. 
the next day when I was given my choice, I chose the option that would let me get as far away from you as possible. But I never forgot you. And now I'm finding out that you never betrayed me at all. That your intention was to free me from both my fate at the hands of the Emerald Suns and from Ripley. And even though it didn't go as you planned, even though Ripley survived, you still saved my life. Because you did love me all along. Renegade, I don't know what to do with that. I've spent so many years hating you. When you came back into my life and proved yourself, I was fine to move on past it because people make mistakes, people grow and change, but you never made a mistake at all. I was completely unjustified in the way I treated you. When I crashed onto Perseus 7, I was horrible to you. I planned to leave you there. I should have leapt into your arms and held you and told you the truth. That despite all that happened, I never really stopped loving you. I'm so sorry. Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? <laughs> Thank you. Is it that obvious? Yeah, well, I haven't slept. I was too worried about you. Too wrapped up in my own guilt. Too busy coming through documents to help with the trial. I just... I couldn't find it in me to rest. What, up on the bed with you? I don't want to hurt you. Of course I'd be careful, I just... Okay. Only for a little while, all right? I'm still pinging the doctor in a few minutes. Are you still comfortable? Good. <laughs> of course I am. You're breathing. Your heart is beating. You're talking. You have your arm around me. How could I be anything but elated? I really thought I was going to lose you. I know. Kajani is planning on forcing us both to take a vacation when everything is settled. Where would you like to go first? I think that's a great idea. No, I don't have a preference. As long as I'm with you, I am completely content. After all we've endured together, after knowing how much you've done for me, expecting absolutely nothing in return, I'll be completely happy just being by your side. Whatever you want to see, wherever you want to go, we'll make it happen. We never got a chance to see what life would be like for us without the constant threat of death or imprisonment. Now we have our whole lives ahead of us, without anything holding us back. I can't wait to explore the galaxy with you. <laughs> no, I'm not falling asleep. I'm just resting my eyes. Hey, how are you feeling? 
Good. I know you're up and walking around, but I don't know, I just... I'll feel better when we know for sure. Especially since I know that trial took a lot out of you. Sitting in that room for hours on end, having our entire past looked at through a microscope, it would have been exhausting even for a completely healthy person. Yeah, it did for me too. But you were the one who slept for 14 hours afterwards. I called Dr. Indra twice. He kept assuring me that you would be just fine, but I was worried. I told you I had the monitoring under control, Captain. Did you doubt me? No, Z, of course not. I just- Renegade is right. You worry too much. You think I worry too much? <laughs> you were the one who insisted on carrying me to the lavatory and sponge bathing me after I was shot because you didn't want me to slip in the shower. And I'm the one that worries too much. Both of your brains would operate much more efficiently if they did not dedicate resources to worrying. I cannot compute how you are able to function on a day-to-day -day basis. And you, you're one to talk. I haven't the slightest idea what you are talking about. Setting off every alarm, including drive engine failure sirens, just because I missed my medication by 30 minutes, ring a bell? <laughs> did you just laugh? I believe I did. Z. Kajani tells me that I am more like Kira every single day. I mean, it's true. You are. Should I consider changing my designation? What do you mean? If I am becoming more like Kira, do you wish me to change my name to hers? It is a possibility that over time, my personality may become so similar to hers that you will not notice a difference from day to day. Z, a lot of Kira is present in who you are. But you're still you. You started out differently than she did. You have had different experiences than she did. And I think the reason that you're growing more like her has less to do with the personality fingerprint and more to do with the fact that you were both influenced by looking after me and Kajani. No one can replace Kira, but no one can replace you either. You are your own being. You're wholly unique. And if you want to change your designation, you absolutely can, but don't do it because you're trying to be someone else. Do it because you want to build up your own identity. But I am simply an AI, a program meant to run a ship. You're not just any AI. And you're not just part of someone I loved and lost. You're you. You're the sum of your experiences. You're talented and funny and your family. My family. Renegade's right. Our family. Is that why you did not want to stay in accommodations provided on the Capitol? Based on the reviews for the suite that the Senator offered you, sitting on a docked ship is by far the inferior option. What can I say, Z? We missed you. And besides, the docks are closer to the hospital than the housing would have been. Speaking of the hospital, Dr. Endra is on the line. Answer it. Dr. Endra, hi. Um, any news? Hello, Captain. Renegade. Yes, I've got news. Okay. Can I take your hand? Thanks. Let me get the most important bit out of the way. You will be just fine. <sighs> Repeated tests have demonstrated that there is no damage to the internal organs, no risk of failure, and there appears to be no negative effects on the mental faculties. What about long term? We've been reviewing the tests conducted over the last few weeks and comparing them to notes from patients who've recovered from the Gengo several months ago. I don't foresee any issues long term. That's... <sighs> that's a huge relief. I will say though that your strength and increased agility will likely remain. That's not a concern for us. The weakness you're currently experiencing is temporary. A short-term side effect of the extreme strain you were put through. Our tests are showing no decline in bone density or muscle mass. As far as we can tell, you'll continue to have this super strength for the rest of your life. Once you've fully recovered, you'll start to see those abilities present themselves in full again. You'll need to be careful, though. 
Some patients on the standard dose have accidentally broken things. Drinking cups, flight controls, even a metal door frame in one case when they gripped it for support to put on their shoes. I'd imagine that you'll have an even greater risk, so use caution as you adjust. Of course, I'd like to see you every few months just to look you over. Otherwise, you've got a clean bill of health from me. Just make sure you contact me at once if anything is amiss, alright? We will. Thank you, Doctor. Farewell, you two. <sighs> yeah, I'm fine. <sighs> I'm just relieved. <laughs> I've had this knot in my stomach for weeks, it feels like, for one reason or another. And now it's gone. I can breathe again. Hmm. What now? Well, Kajani said we have to take a break. So we will. But I'm not retiring just yet. Of course, I still want to be a contractor for the government, specifically for Kajani, but I thought, what if... Look, Ripley is behind bars. He's on a maximum security prison ship for the rest of his life. All of the kids that worked for him have been moved to a secure facility, and there were only a few stragglers that were gainfully employed, so they will stand trial. In other words, the aces are no more. Thanks to your selfless actions, you were pardoned, but we've got to make a name for you, too. You're right, I do have a scheme brewing. Well, less of a scheme, more of a dream that I'd forgotten about until now. One that I can dust off and make new. I want to develop a program. When we were growing up, we didn't get to be kids. Everything we had, everything we did, was all for the gang. For Ripley. And we both know that the Aces were not the only gang on Centaurus, let alone in the sector. What if we started something up to give those kids a real chance. Kajani's looking for a way to take care of them while also meeting the requirements of the sentence. They have to be rehabilitated for a while instead of them joining the military. We could give them education, a roof, food, training even, but also a chance to play and travel and develop hobbies and interests and dreams. A safe place for them to transition from that life into a real one. One where they have more options than just danger. And if it works well for the Aces kids, then maybe we can expand it to other groups, other planets. <sighs> Your smile tells me that you think it's a good idea. <laughs> it's not just for the kids, though. If you and I had this up, it's a way for you to prove yourself, too. Those diplomats will stop doubting you if you've got something positive like that tied to your name. Besides, a lot of those kids already reported to you in the past, and I know they trust you. Of course, we would still travel and take jobs for Kajani. We can balance it all. After all, there are two of us. <clears throat> Three of us. <laughs> we'll talk to Kajani about it before we leave. You had best have a vacation itinerary in hand before you mention this plan. The Senator will not likely agree until she knows for certain that you will take time off. You're not wrong. Far be it from me to disobey the direct orders of one of the most formidable women in the galaxy. <laughs> Where do you want to go first? Yeah, that would be cool. The Coronix Food Festival is coming up. We could make it a point to stop by, spend a few days. It's in a few weeks. It would be easy to do that on our way back from somewhere else. What else? Renegade, if I may interject. The captain's dopamine levels surge whenever she mentions the Celestial Ridge Trail on Delta One. I believe this destination would make her the happiest. See? Can I have no secrets? Not this time. Yeah, of course she's telling the truth. I mean, are you sure, though? Delta-1 is all the way on the other side of the galaxy, and that's...
quite a lot of walking, you're still recovering. Perhaps a visit to the hot springs on Sylvan 4 will speed up the recovery process. It would be a perfect way to start your trip on a relaxing note. I agree. Z has spent a lot of time thinking about this. 0 0.07 seconds is not a lot of time. <laughs> All right. How about five days at a resort on Sylvan 4 to rest and recuperate? Then the Celestial Ridge Trail. If we take it slow and enjoy the hostels, that'll be over a week. And then we'll finish it up with three days of the Coronix Food Festival. And of course, we can leave a handful of days free for just stopping off anywhere else you might want to see. <laughs> Literally anywhere. Do not hold back. This is your first real vacation, ever. I want you to let completely loose. Even more than that one time we stole Angus's credits and spent them all on sweets. <laughs> I am fairly certain that we can find a candy store somewhere along the way if that's what you want. I'm looking forward to this. No, I usually don't kick back and relax, but for you, I will make an exception. <laughs> Renegade. To what do I owe the pleasure? And you're calling from the Zephyr. Isn't that a little risky? All right. Yes, I have what you've asked for. Not directly in hand yet, but I'll be able to obtain it and pass it along within 48 hours. I'm sorry, that's as quickly as I can get my hands on it. There are processes for these things, as you well know. Hmm. I'm given to understand we're meeting tomorrow to discuss some idea of Andromeda's. I'll delay it to buy us a little time. She knows how busy I am, she won't think twice if I delay an appointment by one day. The next time I contact you, I'll simply send you coordinates of the pickup. The passphrase will be Strawberry Jam. Of course. You know, she will be furious if she finds out this is going on behind her back. <laughs> then we'd best not get caught. Bye for now. I know I keep saying it, but this is more beautiful than I ever could have imagined. I thought I'd be tired, but we've set a pretty nice pace, and the hostels have been so comfortable. Good call on the treehouse pod last night, that was awesome. And that mattress was like sleeping on a cloud. <laughs> In fairness, I do sleep better with you beside me. Oh, look. Shooting star. <laughs> yeah, let's sit and watch the stars for a bit. This spot is nice and secluded, and it has a great view. I'm so glad the timing worked out to be here during a meteor shower. It's just... astounding, honestly. The second most wonderful thing I've seen in the whole galaxy. <laughs> no, the dessert table at that restaurant in Dagas was not the first. Still in my top ten, though. <laughs> I'll be honest, most of the things on my top ten list are from this trip. The thermal pools on Sylvan 4 are one of them. I mean, I had heard of purple water before, but the combination of those minerals really just blows your mind. I've never seen such a color. And the garden? I could have spent a week in there and still not seen every kind of flower they had growing. I agree. The Museum of Galactic Flight was really fascinating. It's insane to see how far each species has come and how we've all influenced each other's designs. I agree. The first aircraft models from each species were <laughs> a little scary. The human airplane looked like a death trap. 
and the Walex one, it kind of reminded me of those floating tubes we used in the Thermal River. The Manxel honestly had the most reasonable prototype. It actually looked semi-safe. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The asteroid sculptures were amazing. Not just the detail of the art, but the scale on which they do it just... astounding. Using giant lasers to make art from an asteroid in an asteroid field, what will they think of next? And of course I'm sure we're going to find more wonderful things before this trip is over. We've still got the food festival, and the more I research your suggestion of the ice caves on Hexon, the more excited I am to see them. We'll definitely see a Walex orchestra at the end of the trip. There's a performance on Dagas right when we get back. I set Z to book us some good tickets in a nice hotel. We'll have to go shopping for something elegant to wear, though. <laughs> you know full well I've never owned a formal outfit, outside of military dress. It'll be fun. Besides, I can guarantee that experience is going to make the top ten, so we may as well go all out. The number one spot? Eh, no. That's already taken. And it will never be unseated. Well, the first is you. Renegade. Specifically, the moment I woke up in that hospital and your entire face just lit up. Every worry just vanished. I tried not to show it at the time, but it took my breath away. You always have. You are the most wonderful person in the galaxy. My closest friend. My most trusted companion. Don't tell Z. <laughs> you don't have to thank me for anything. If anything, I should be thinking... What are you doing? You mean everything to me, too. <laughs> of course I'll marry you. <laughs> yes, you did surprise me. And kudos to you, that's really hard to do. <laughs> My hand, um, sure, here. Wait, is this... Renegade? Your mom's ring? Have you been carrying it all this time? <laughs> I remember the first time you showed me this. Of course, I'd been wanting to see it for ages. I didn't know that it was a ring, I just knew you had some trinket worth looking at. <laughs> I couldn't help it. You were eight when you were brought to the orphanage. You had a life before the aces. But I was left there as a baby, so your arrival was the most interesting thing that had happened to me in my whole life up to that point. There was finally someone my exact age to spend time with. Everyone else was either a few years older or a few years younger. That first day, everyone thought you just didn't talk because of the accident, or maybe you couldn't talk at all. I was the only one who noticed you were holding something in your mouth. <laughs> it was a smart move. I only recognized you were doing it because I did the same thing. That's the only place I could hide things from the matrons. They checked bags, hands, pockets, even my shoes sometimes to make sure I wasn't taking a cut of any pay or goods during deliveries, or sneaking small weapons into the sleeping area. So I'd gotten good at bringing in small items that way. 
But naturally, the fact that you were hiding something made you all the more interesting to me. <laughs> well, of course I didn't ask you about it. I wanted you to trust me, and immediately going after your biggest secret seemed like a bad way to start. I knew that if we became friends, I'd find out about it eventually, and maybe even could help you keep it hidden. Everyone at the orphanage was so closed off, though, and getting caught playing or goofing off resulted in punishment and more work, so I really wasn't sure how to approach you. Yeah, until that night. <laughs> of course I remember. I heard you sniffling, and my first thought was I didn't want the matrons to hear you and get mad at you. So I crawled into your cot with you, I rubbed your back and held your hand. After a few moments, it became less about keeping you from getting punished and more about soothing you because I found that I hated seeing you upset. <laughs> and I did that every time you were upset, for weeks. you did end up returning the favor. When I messed up a delivery and the matrons made sure I wouldn't repeat my mistake. To cheer me up, you showed me what you'd been hiding. This ring. You told me about how it had belonged to your grandmother, who had given it to your father when he said he'd found the woman of his dreams. And you told me about how you had to take it from your mom's hand after the accident because you already knew what happened to kids in Centaurus if they didn't have any other family and you wanted something to remember them both by to help get you through it well it meant a lot that you showed it to me which is why when Ripley found out about it several years later and took it from you I broke into his office and got it back I honestly didn't stop to think about what he'd do to me if I got caught. All I knew was I couldn't stand to see you so devastated. I had to get it back to you so you could hide it someplace safe, someplace he'd never find it. <laughs> the scar was worth it. I knew he wouldn't kill me, he had invested too much money in me at that point. The thing that got me through that beating was reliving the moment where I gave it back to you. How relieved you looked. And I felt a bit smug that I'd outwitted him and he'd never be able to get his hands on it again. Where did you end up hiding it, by the way? Oh, good idea. He never would have thought to check there. Wait, did you have it with you on Perseus 7? Then how... I mean, you were with me the whole time, and if it was back on Centaurus, then the entire Ace's base would be under control of the government. Oh. Kajani helped you. <laughs> of course she did. This piece of jewelry has a lot of history behind it, doesn't it? And now it gets to see a whole lot more. It's weird to have it on my finger. No, of course I like it. I love it, even. I just never thought that I would be the one to get to wear it. Well, you were the first person in my life that I ever trusted. And time and time again, you've shown that your love for me knows no bounds. Yeah, I did take a bullet for you, and maybe I did help you put your life on a different track, but you endured a decade of hell for my sake, and then you put your life on the line to save me and Kajani, and nearly got yourself killed rescuing me from Ripley, so how about we stop keeping score, huh? Mm. It doesn't feel real to me either. What is it? 
<laughs> yeah, if Z knew this was gonna happen, you should probably let her know. Hello, Renegade. Congratulations to you both. I will begin seeking out wedding venues and available dates. No, that's okay, Z. We don't have to plan anything just yet. After all, it's going to be a pretty small wedding. Just the three of us and Kajani. Besides, I don't know the first thing about planning anything like that, so we can put something together a little later. Too late. I have already identified 700 venues that use the keywords quiet, small, peaceful, beautiful, intimate. Based on dates available for the next several cycles and average reviews, only 107 will best suit your needs. Now cross-referencing photos and details with both of your personal preferences. Z, you don't have to- I have determined the best three options for you both. I will forward the details to your data pads for perusal at your leisure. What would we do without you, Z? Crash and burn. <laughs> Probably. I will leave you to your adventure, and will send a message to Kajani to let her know the happy news. Thank you, Z. We miss you. I miss you too. <sighs> it's just... I never dreamed that we'd get here. I'm so glad our paths crossed again. I love you, Renegade. Exploring the galaxy with you is going to be the adventure of a lifetime. <laughs>